Testing. Holy fuck. Oh. Testing my microphone. Testing? Oh, I guess it works. Please disregard this message. Go back to your normal operating old screen. Me too, Voorhees Files. Me too.
Well, hello and welcome, welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, long day. I don't know, it's a work in progress. <clears throat> All right, well, hello and welcome, you guys. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, as I was singing earlier. Today is actually Thursday, which means it's Mother Truck and Vlog Day, you guys. Huge shout out to the Voorhees Files. You had a rough day? Welcome, bro. We're going to try to cheer you up uh, the only way I know how, and that's by getting on YouTube and talking for two hours straight. Let me do a quick rundown for you guys. I have a uh, full-on action-packed vlog for you guys tonight. Talk about what I've been vaping short. I have a beer here that I think in the title it said Epic Beer. This is this is a completely, amazingly epic beer that I'm really excited about tonight because I've been saving this beer for Three years now, four years now, came from a subscriber four years ago. Why not do it tonight? Why not, Voorhees? Exactly. Anyway, I appreciate you guys doing here. Uh, let me do that quick rundown, as I said. Um, yeah, what I've been vaping, beer, staples, right? Uh, dual, double retro vape tonight. I feel like we've been, uh, it, we ignored the retro vape like four weeks in a row, so we got a double retro vape tonight. We have a very random liquid tasting tonight. I'm gonna pepper in some news and advocacy, and if you guys stay till the end, we're gonna get to listen to some more old Grim Green Christian death metal, this time with live video on there. And uh, yeah, welcome you guys. I'm just so bored of being angry all of the time just want to say this right out of the gate. This is the title of the thumbnail. It's the thumbnail of the video. I'm just, I, I'm legitimately bored of being constantly outraged, constantly outraged. It's like nonstop, nonstop, constant outrage. And it's honestly like, it's, it's, it's depleting. You know, I, I feel like it sucks my energy so intensely. And so what I'm trying to do is stop being so angry all the time and angry at, at everybody. We'll get into this when we get into the news and advocacy, but I'm trying to change my mindset a little bit. You know, I'm too, I'm too, uh, like motivated by rage, like motivated by, uh, being mad. And I can't let that continue to motivate me. You know, I, ju I just can't do it. It's not good for my own mental well being. It's not good for anybody. So moving forward, what's up? Whole new attitude. I'm trying to have a whole new attitude. So, dang, welcome, you guys. What do you want to do first? I don't know. What do you want to do first? I don't know. Let's do that thing that is my new favorite thing where I get to hear from one of my subscribers. Did I pull it off of this? Oh, no, I definitely didn't. Um, I get to do that one thing that's my new favorite thing where I get to hear from one of my subscribers now with picture-in-picture -picture video. Didn't know if you, if you knew that I have this technology now. Hashtag unity, yeah. The good unity, not Lee, the good hashtag unity, like hashtag unity, not uh, Steppenwolf with uh, the, the mother boxes. That one thing, let's hear, where's matching carpet? You here tonight, matching carpet? Where's you, where are you at, bud? Hey, Grim Green, uh, this is matching carpet. I'm on my way to drop off your, uh, your package for the cool. uh, Titan SE. Cool. Uh, sorry about this shitty footage, but uh, I am technically driving right now and uh, just wanted to give you a shout out for yourself. Uh, no one ever shouts out Grim Green. Um, you shout out everybody else, so one for you, buddy. And uh, yeah, keep on vaping. Uh, hey, thanks, Matching Carpet. I've never been punched in the head via, via uh, an iPhone before, so that was a whole new interesting experiment. If anybody else out there has a video similar to Matching Carpets that you'd like to see featured on this vlog, you can send them over to me. It's nick at grimgreen.com. Just mark your subject, that one thing, and, and I'd love to hear from you. It can be literally anything. Look at Matching Car. He's in his car. He's just headed to the post office. He's like, I'm going to shoot a video. Shoot it. Send it over. can be literally anything i'd love to hear from you guys so uh i pre <laughs> appreciate that matching carpet appreciate that i think i saw some super chats coming you we sh let's do a couple super chats before we get to the beer which bt dubs I, i'm not sure if you saw the thumbnail the beer this week it's 15.1 percent which means look let's <laughs> let's calm down let's not get out of hand should be a real fun vlog What the hell was that? 
I got my stream deck working now. You see, I got my stream deck working. So things are uh, kind of all out of control. Yo, yo, I just went out to sh shout out the Cool Kids Club for being the most inviting community ever. Uh, thank you. I mean, that's tremendous. I can't see who this is because it just says my pinned comment always covers up the first super chat. So the first super chat is a complete mystery. So I apologize. Uh, someone, yo, yo, shout out to you. And you know what? Don't be surprised. Don't be so surprised that the yo, yo, cool kids are the most inviting community ever. We're, we're a chill group of people, man. We like to chill. Matt Sinister, uh, what do you call a virgin in Alabama? An orphan. Wow, dark. <laughs> Matt Sinister. Matt Sinister just power bombing that joke. Super Goods here. Holy crap, no more anger. Super Good are here to rub your belly and <laughs> sing Soft Kitty in your ear. Oh, Super Good. You know what my favorite part about reading that Super Good chat is? I read it in my head in a British accent. Rub your belly. Rub your belly. Appreciate you, super good. New Wave Dave uh, was rocking out to some Accept. Hell yeah. Uh, and wouldn't you know it, Dirk Schneider starts screaming, give Green Green five bucks. Dude, how do you not go broke listening to all of this music, New Wave Dave? Are all these bands telling you to give me money? That's insane. <laughs> Zach, that's very gracious of you. Uh, it's hard killer, but someone has to do it. Uh, better you than me, Zach. Better, or I don't know. Maybe better me than you. Zaddy Vapes, whole new attitude. Did Grim pick up on some good Cali Green from the dispensary? Love you, bro. Happy effing vlog day. Hashtag change anger for bud. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't know. I've been uh, just a little bit self-reflective lately, you know, going into 2021. It's kind of bizarre. It just feels more like 2020, you know? I don't feel like I'm personally doing anything to expand my mind or horizons or grow or learn or like grow this YouTube. It's like vaping's been been beat over the brow so, so intensely over the last few years that any little vape news thing that comes out, I just... I rage up. I go into full Hulk mode and that's the mode I'm trying to just switch it off just a little bit. We'll talk about this when we get into news and advocacy because you're probably going to see some things that will make you go into fucking instant Hulk mode, instant Hulk mode, instant Hulk mode. And that's what I'm trying to prevent. I don't like being into Hulk mode. I don't like being startled by Stanton Glantz. Oh my God. <sighs> He's Stanton Glantz. <laughs> Ah, I'm befuddled as to why he keeps showing up here. Um, actually, you know what I want to do right now that's going to really help my mood? This is really going to help my mood. Aha. Yeah, who wants to taste some beer? Oh, it's beer time. I, you know, if I'm being real honest, one of the reasons, apart from getting to stream and goof off and have so much fun every Thursday with you guys, is I, you know, being who, who I am, I try to take care of myself, you know, here and there. And then sometimes I give up and sometimes I don't. And I've been trying to limit my alcohol and beer intake to just the vlog, just the vlog, the vlog, this my time with you guys, Bogan is this is the time I get to drink a beer. I'm not Sam, I, I, I can't drink four beers every single day, I just can't. But the beer that we have tonight, I don't know if you understand the impact of this beer, but this is the Goose Island Bourbon County brand. This is the barley wine aged in uh, bourbon barrels, coffee added to it. This is what many consider to be like the the, or one of the best beers in the world. In the world, man. I've been hanging on to this since 2018. I got my Kiss Army bottle opener, fucking Matt Sinister. What up, Daniel? How you doing, bro? Let's get into this. Let's open this beer. Let's pour it into, boom. Yeah, it's my good luck Jets mug. Yeah, this is the uh, Casey Pickle family uh, Jets mug. I find I have better vlogs when I use this Jets mug and I find that the beer tastes better, you know? It just, uh, I can't explain it. It's just science. You know, I've done a series of randomized control trials. You, like, you don't think I've done the data on this? Jets mug, Bourbon County brand, barley wine. I, this is good. I have been, I have been wanting to try this beer since 
I don't even know. Since back I was working at Starbucks, like me and my buddy Meat would sit in the roaster control room talking about three subjects generally, metal, uh, science fiction, and beer. And Bourbon County brand, this Goose Island is one of those, you know, Meat would tell me, oh, I heard that uh, this store is getting three bottles of the Goose Island Bourbon County brand. And, and, you know, we'd go there. No, they don't have any. This is a beer that I've been chasing forever, forever. So, Cheers. Here's to you guys. Hope you got something good with you tonight. Yeah, that's a uh, hard sticky monkey vibes. Oh my God, sticky monkey vibes. Alcohol forward, incredible, like pungent, sweet prune flavor, like a, like a stone fruit of some sort, like a plum or a prune. It's got that heavy coffee flavor. It's got that heavy, heavy bourbon flavor. It's a little bit more carbonated or effervescent than I thought it would be. I was expecting, I don't know, it's a barley wine, so I don't know really what I was expecting. Usually I'm expecting, you know, when I hear bourbon barrel aged, I'm thinking, well, this is going to be like syrupy, just a stouty syrupy beer. This is nice and sparkly, nice and clean. I can already feel that first sip. I can feel the booze just go down into my body, just all up in my brain. You know, it's like those vaping commercials where you see the brain poison in the kids' brains, you know? That's what the alcohol is doing to my brain right now. Thanks, The Real Cost. This is unbelievable. This is unbelievable. I'm having a little bit of a love affair right now with this beer. No, you don't put cornflakes on the sugar cookies uh, to juggle out. You put cornflakes in the sugar cookies. The cookies themselves are made with cornflakes. Shit, what do I even pair this with? Uh, that's it. This is going to be the perfect pairing. Is my man Jake Scrapwood in the chat tonight? You out here, Jake? All right. Well, even if you're not, I'm going to be vaping your liquid. Uh, one of my patrons, Jake, he just makes this is his DIY. It's like his all-day banger vape. It's a vanilla bourbon honey tobacco. I have had this bottle for a while, and it wasn't only until recently when I got out this big 40-millimeter atomizer that I kind of started using oh. this tobacco juice. Vanilla bourbon tobacco with this Goose Island Bourbon County brand barley wine. Uh, This is... You guys that are here right now, you might be getting ready to experience the greatest beer pairing that has ever happened on the Grim Grain YouTube channel right now. If you agree with me, go ahead and hit that like button. I sure would appreciate it, you guys. Let's give this a shot. Yep. Yep. Everything I predicted just came true. This is an incredible beer pairing. Jake, I love this liquid anyway. I love this liquid. It's a nice tobacco, vanilla, bourbon, honey. The bourbon really comes through, especially when I'm pairing it with this Goose Island. It's like these bourbon flavors were just destined to meet each other. And now that they have, it's party. It's party time USA, Chasing Clouds. You were here. You guys just witnessed the best beer pairing that has ever happened. I like it so much. I'm just going to take a second. Look, we got plenty of time tonight, right? We're running long. I'm going to, I got to pair this again. It's just too damn good. And this is a 15% beer. Did I already mention that? If I already mentioned that, that means the beer should be working as advertised. Oh my God. Oh my God, that is good. Oh my God, that is good. Well, Jake, appreciate you letting me uh, use your liquid for the best beer pairing of all time. Uh, good. It's good shit. In fact, here, if we go over to uh, Beer Advocate, uh, where did this go? Yeah, this is a this has a 100% rating on, on Beer Advocate. This is a what they consider to be a world-class beer. World class, which means a few things, which means it's A, it's really, really good, and B, it's probably really difficult to get. All of the best beers on Beer Advocate are really hard to get. It's like, oh, Vanilla Bean Dark Lord, you can get it you know, once every five years if you sell your soul to the devil and stand in line in the beating sun, then you can get a ticket to stand in another line to maybe get inside the brewery to maybe have the chance to purchase a bottle of beer. Good luck, fuckers. 
all the beers are like that. I traveled to Belgium to get one of the other greatest beers of all time, but uh, awesome. This is great. God, this beer is good. I kind of want to pair it with this uh, Turkish cream as well, maybe. MTO. Mm. Pretty good. I'm going to say that's pretty good. I'm going to say that's pretty good. So yeah, um, real quickly, before I get to any Super Chats, uh, I don't have the bumper anymore. I don't have the bumper anymore, but I do real quickly want to talk about what... <laughs> Dwayne, oh God. All right, here we go, Super Chats. That's it. That's all you get. Where'd they go? I saw you there, Dwayne. Do it and you're cool. Do it and you're cool. Um, did you... Wait, where am I? Zaddy? Yeah, whole new attitude. That's right, Zaddy. Rob, did you see the Zoe pics? No, what Zoe pics? I don't know what you're talking about. Rob, who, who, who's Zoe? Who's Zoe? Barbara Burgess, uh, your auntie nurse told me to send you some money and told me to tell you to keep fighting for people's lives. Love you, cuz. Oh, Barbara. Thank you. Why are you giving me so many feels? I love you, Barbara. Um, I, I think about Laura all the time, constantly all the time. In fact, the way that our aunt, the way that my aunt Laura said Bowell is that. She said Bowell, Bowell. And now every time I've said bowl in my life, I've got my wife saying Bowell in honor of, uh, in honor of Aunt Laura. She was a, she was a nurse and uh, I feel like she would be pretty stoked that I'm trying to, trying to get as many smokers to quit as possible. That feels good, Barbara. Thank you. Uh, DJ Cat, type two sold out. Next shipment. I don't know because there's a vape mail ban. That's my answer. I don't know. <laughs> I do not know. I don't know if we're going to be able to get more type twos from China. I don't know if, we're, when, if, we, if and when we get type twos, we'll be able to sell the type twos, maybe distros to shops. Look, we're doing the best we can. <laughs> We're doing the best we can. Own boy, own boy OC is here. And that's just like, ha, ah, that makes me stoked. Sean Hooligan, what up, brother? We vape, we vote. Uh, I haven't talked to Sean Hooligan in years, man. Hope you're doing good. We do vape and we still vote. Uh, Moo let much love from the UK. Unity all the way. How many nymphomaniacs does it take to screw in a light bulb? Just don't ask how they got in there. What two? Just don't ask how they got in there. I'm sorry I botched that punchline. I really did. Chris Cullen. Hey, Grim, I want to send you a vinyl. What? Yeah, I'm never going to say no to a vinyl. What, are you kidding me? Ugh. I sent you an email. Hope to get to you soon. Trust me, you'll love it. I'll, let's get together real soon, Chris Cullen. I'm not going to ever say no to a vinyl, bro. Never. John. Nick, I'm hoping you can help me with the black drip tip you have on your billet box. Yes. In fact, John... You're in, you're in the comments of the week. Yep, we're going to get there in a sec. Zach, uh, if you're a fan of hazy IPAs, Rogue's Bat Squatch is... Uh, I like Rogue beers. I just like Rogue beers. I just like Rogue beers. I will definitely check out Bat Squatch because why would you not want to drink a beer named Bat Squatch? That's incredible. Uh, now, finally, Omboy Osi, blow some freaking O's. <laughs> Yuck. You blow some O's. How about that? Uh, painting in the sky with diamonds. Oh, thank you. Mm, give me all the lovey feels. I really appreciate that. Really appreciate that. Now, now real quickly, let's talk about a few things I have been vaping. So technically, this is everything that's on my desk right now. I've been trying to whittle it down a little bit, but what we have is the gen with the violator on top. Hogut's Butterscotch is in there. The Geek Vape Obelisk, which is up for review very soon. Got filled up with butter number 10 because butter number 10. That's an M17 with the QP Juggernaut MR and Smacks Lick It on the inside. It's not called Lick It anymore. It's called something else. In fact, it's not called anything else anymore because Smacks is closed. The Abyss, there's that drip tip, bro. That's an Oleg drip tip. We'll talk about that in a second. Bridged 1.2 and butter number 8 from Super Good on the inside of that bad boy. Thelema 250C with the Reload SRTA. Got baked cornflake cookie on the inside. That's the Mixed K-Fun with 12 milligram Turkish cream. That's the Def Mods and the Valhalla. 40 millimeter with that Jake's Grapwood tobacco. Bonneville from RCM with the rye and the baked banana in it. 
And then I got the RCM Mando as well with the recoil and Pony on Acid. And then lastly on the end is the Whirl S, which has just been sticking around like, I don't, I keep using it. It's just a really hyper good mouth to lung. And I kind of like, the, one of the reasons I love this, and I think I mentioned this last week, is I like to hold it like this. I like to hold it like a cigar, you know? I like to hold it like a cigar because it feels like that, that girthy sort of huh, cigar type of flavor. It feels like a, feels like a space cigar. Maybe not a space cigar. Um, but as far as what I've actually, actually been vaping like actively, actively, it's been like three things. One of them, damn it, it's been the Abyss. It's been the Abyss because I like the bridged 1.2 on the inside. I love the Oleg drip tip. And I like the butter number eight on the inside. It's been, uh, it's been good. It's been good and banging. I'm still like, I don't know. I have so many mixed feelings about the Abyss, especially the name of the company that makes it. But whew, shit, I can't deny that it uh, vapes pretty awesome. K Fun Mix. This is, this is, this is my new desert island. This is all I want. Give me 12 milligram and a K Fun. Put it on the mix and just let me vape my face off. This is what I'm after. And then lastly, I've been using the Bonneville Bonneville Mech from RCM more than the Mando, and I don't know why that is. I got the Mando and I was using it, and then using the Mando made me want to use my Bonneville more. I got it out and I said, Wow, this makes me miss my Bonneville. I've been vaping it. There's a rye RDA on top, and this is the new hotness. Look at this nonsense. Baked banana cream beauty. These are, well, this is one of the super, 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 super top secret juices that we had been working on for the last few weeks. I made it my mission to make a banana flavor that could compete with Boule Bolu. I think I, 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 think I, I, think I succeeded. I'm not saying it's better than Boule Bolu. Like it's it's just meant to compete with Boule Bolu. You know, Boule Bolu is one of those, it's so good and everybody loves it, but I think it's been around, I think it's been uh, sucking up a little bit of the limelight for a little bit too long. So I kind of set out to make a, a better banana. Even with an excessively dying battery, I still love the crap out of that banana. Hang on. I need a new banana. I, need, I mean, I need a new battery. I need to hit this banana properly. I got no 21700s. It's messed up. Okay. There we go. I, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit in love with that uh, banana flavor, but those are the three things that I've really been like, those are my go-to, mouth to lung. Now, I've also been rocking some pods. You know, I like the V-through. You know, I like the Weenax K1. There's been a new guy here hanging out for a little bit. This is the Vupu Vinci little pod guy. It's kind of rad, dude. It kind of vapes almost exactly like the V-through. I have a review for this really soon. Maybe next week I'll have a review for this. Mm-hmm. Really, really nice mouth to lung. Really nice mouth to lung. But that's what's uh, that's what's been keeping me off of deadly combustible tobacco cigarettes for the last week or so, maybe longer. And I guess now, dang man, what time is it? Is it time for to? God damn it, Stanton Glance, you son of a bitch. I guess it's time to do some news and advocacy. Stanton Glance could hear me thinking positive thoughts about vaping and just showed up and was like, no, well, why would you think that? I'm befuddled why you would think that. Let's do, uh, <laughs> let's do a little bit of news, you guys. News and advocacy, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I need to slow down on that beer because I can already feel it. In fact, right before the news and advocacy, this is at least going to have to get uh, opened up. We're doing an open shirt today. Richard, better banana, Glacier banana? Yeah, well, here's the thing. Glacier banana is long gone, and it truly and honestly wasn't that complicated of a flavor, and I, I feel like it was like a banana mentholated, and then that's it. 
Well, then that's it. Sergio, better late than never. I appreciate you here, buddy. Didn't feel right without, a, a, didn't feel right as a vlog, like without Sergio here. So um, I'm tired of being mad. Yeah. I'm real tired of being ragey and I'm trying to control my emotions. I'm so emotionally invested in vaping that when, when I see clueless people saying negative things or just completely inaccurate things or straight up just lying about vaping, I instantly turn into Red Hulk and it's like, it just, it kills me, kills me. And there's been times where I have been on social media, I've been on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook or something like this, and I'll see a comment or a tweet from someone that'll rub me the wrong way and I'll be a dick. And I don't want to be a dick because you don't change people's minds by being a dick. You don't win people over to your side by being a dick. It's like, fuck you. Why don't you think the way we do? Hi, that's going to win nobody over. And it's things like this from Representative Debbie Wasserman. Flavored e-cigarettes are fueling a youth epidemic. I proudly join representatives, someone, and 42 of my colleagues today in urging FDA tobacco to remove flavored e-cigarettes from the market and deny applications for flavored e-cigarettes and other flavored tobacco products. When I saw this tweet, I just wanted to... Just middle fingers everywhere. I just wanted to get on there and be like, you fucking stupid goddamn cunt. Like... But that's not, like, that's the reaction I wanted to have. But that reaction helps nobody. It doesn't help our cause. It doesn't help me. It doesn't help my sanity. It's certainly not going to win over Debbie Wasserman if I just go on there and call her stupid and call her names. And, like, that's what I want to do. It's like, how could you be that dumb? How could, how, how, Debbie? How could you possibly be that dumb? E-cigarette epidemic? Look at the vaping numbers. Look at the smoking numbers. Like all you have to do is spend eight seconds and looking at the data and realize that, ah, oh, Debbie Wasserman, I might be wrong. But on that Debbie Wasserman thread, uh, I did a shout out for Lindsey Stroud and TBN. I'm going to do a shout out for Lindsey Stroud here. You know those golden oldies uh, vape capital tour, the, the videos I have been showing really randomly kind of on the vlog and TBN, and it's basically just, hi, my name is Dave. I smoked for 46 years, and I, I quit vaping finally when I found my unicorn raspberry e-liquid. Those videos under this tweet. Yeah, right, Richard D.? Serenity now. Serenity now. Under this tweet, Lindsey Stroud posted like no less than 30 tweets all responding with those golden oldies of vaping Capitol Hill tour, and I love it. So shout out to uh, Lindsey Stroud for being calm and collected in her response to Debbie Wasserman. I was not. So I'm just trying to change, I'm just trying to change my attitude, man. And you can't, this is a, le this is a lesson that I have been learning for the last year, maybe two, two years is, I can't let that emotional reaction control my logic. I can't let that re rea emotional reaction control my decision making. And that's something that happens way, way too frequently. We are humans. We are emotional creatures. I cry. I laugh. I, I have the full range of emotions. I feel guilt. I feel sorry. I feel sad. I feel, you know, all these emotions. To deny your emotions is goofy, but don't. Don't let your emotions run your life because when you let your emotions run your life, you let anybody run your life. You let anybody that can get a rise out of you control your mood. And that is not okay. I think real, like real power comes from being able to sit back and wait and then give a, give a proper, calculated, thoughtful, calm response. No matter how rage you're feeling, we need to calm Here's the response. Let's let's actually uh, try to do good things for vaping instead of just getting on people, getting on Twitter and calling people stupid. So that's like I'm trying to be a less angry person. And when I feel those emotional reactions, like when I saw Wasserman's tweet and I instantly just wanted to punch directly through my monitor, I went, "Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna live in this for a second. I'm just gonna be fucking mad for a second, and I'm gonna yell and I'm gonna call this woman names from the comfort of my office. And then when I get to my keyboard." I'm going to be a completely different person. I'm going to be calm. I'm going to be logical. I'm going to present her with facts and science and evidence. And that's it. 
And that's my personal lesson for me. It's not be a be like water. Breeze tones. Right? Be like water. Be like water. We are, I know, thank God we're emotional. We are emotional creatures, man. We're emotional creatures. And, I, you know, I've never experienced a range of emotions as I have trying to be uh, trying to be a vape advocate. But let's move forward here. I don't want to spend all this time in the news and advocacy. This is basically my favorite thing on planet Earth right now. Let's say second favorite thing. This is Vaping Demystified from the Yorkshire Cancer Research Institute in Yorkshire, England. I'll put a link down in the description, but they put together, it's about 35 minutes, and it is a documentary of awesome proportions. Awesome proportions. Oh, Jay Hayes is here. Why are you, why, people, <laughs> what up, Jay Hayes? Hey, Jay Hayes, I want you to know that uh, I, I gave a little bit of an earful to Vapor's Cloud today. I was thinking about you. Appreciate you being here. Vaping Demystified. Check out this documentary, dude. It's 35 minutes and it's awesome. It's completely awesome. It's, you know, it's a UK stance on vaping, which is, hi, harm reduction, you know, empathy, kind of meeting people where they are and giving them the tools they need to quit smoking on their own terms. Vaping Demystified. I can't recommend it enough. Additionally, the Safer Nicotine Wiki, you guys, this is our website to edit and add science, facts, data, evidence, all goes into the Safer Nicotine Wiki. So I'll post that link down in the description. Of course, there's gonna be the Google Doc. Have you guys clicked on the Google Doc? This is the best document on the internet right now. This is every major government and major health organization's stance on vaping with links to where they said it. So when the American Heart Association gets up there on Twitter and says, hmm, you should not use vaping to quit smoking, you can go to this document and you can say, well, what about in 2018 when you said that we should? What happened? You used to say that. Great documentary. Uh, of course, I'm going to pimp out rights for vapors. And of course, I'm going to pimp out this new one, tobaccokills.ca. These are both Canadian organizations and they are calls to actions essentially. Rights for Vapors has call to actions and tobaccokills.ca has a call to action as well. If you're in Canada, do it. <laughs> if you're in Canada, do it. Go to tobaccokills.ca like every single day and do the every single day call to action. They're trying to ban nicotine in Canada. They're trying to ban flavors in Canada. It's out of control. Now, this brings us to this. In fact, hang on. I just, I don't want to do all the super chats right now, but I saw that Jay Hayes had a very gracious super chat. Oh, that's very gracious of you, Jay Hayes. Thank you. Stay beautiful. Be good, brother. You stay beautiful too. You Can I do this? Will you sue me? Can I do this? <laughs> I can't do it, Jay Hayes. What's up, guys? Jay Hayes here. Okay, I can't do it. That was a little bit more of like a, a thesis voice than a Jay Hayes voice. Anyway, Jay Hayes, I appreciate you being here. And that's, I mean, that's overly gracious of you. You stay beautiful. You be good, brother. You be good. Um, Steven Crowder, okay? This isn't news relating to Steven Crowder, but I follow Steven Crowder on Twitter. I, I subscribe to Steven Crowder on, uh, on YouTube. And he posted this recently that just kind of shocked me. He says he just got out of Twitter jail to find YouTube removed our COVID rebuttal episode. Okay, look, that's not really either, neither here nor there. That's not why I'm concerned about this. Your content violated YouTube's community guidelines as has been removed. Now look at the highlighted part. YouTube does not allow content that spreads medical misinformation that contradicts the World Health Organization. YouTube does not allow content that spreads medical misinformation that contradicts the World Health Organization. Hi, YouTube. Literally everything I'm about to talk about contradicts the World Health Organization. It just does. It just contradicts the World Health Organization. I was surprised. I mean, I'm not super surprised to see a video of Steven Crowder's getting pulled down because that's just how he rolls. But just the idea that it got taken down because it contradicts the World Health Organization? Whoa. That's very, I'm sorry, that's really hyper authoritarian. That's like, if you say anything bad about, uh, you know, the Ministry of Health, it's a little 1984, it's a little, it's a little scary, honestly, because as I said, I'm gonna spend probably the next 15 to 20 minutes 
doing nothing but directly contradicting the World Health Organization and their stance on vaping. I know, just regarding COVID, right? But that's not what it says. It still says, hang on, where'd it go? Where'd Crowder go? Crowder, Crowder, Crowder. YouTube does not allow content that contradicts the World Health Organization or local health authorities' information about COVID-19, including on methods to prevent... Okay, so yeah, it is related to COVID-19. I just find it weird. It, it freaks me out a little bit. It freaks me out a little bit that someone even... Look, even if he was probably going against the World Health Organization's you know, advice on COVID-19, even if he was... Who cares? This is, this is, I mean, he's allowed to. He can get on YouTube and say those things. I mean, look, I guess not ultimately who cares, right? You have to be responsible. You have to spend responsible, you have to, you know, give responsible information. But just because you're going against the World Health Organization on things, even COVID, even COVID, we do not allow information that goes against the World Health Organization. Yeah, Jay Hayes is just making sure that I can buy some donuts this weekend. So, shit, let's get into it. Let's talk about Mike Bloomberg. Um, one of my favorite people on earth, Mike Bloomberg. Mike Bloomberg, no. Nope, forget what I just said. It sounded a lot, I know, now listen. I know it sounded like I just said that Mike Bloomberg is one of my favorite people on earth, but that is wrong. I was wrong. And I misspoke when I said that. Michelle Mitten is one of my favorite people on earth. And she wrote this beautiful piece for inside sources about Mike Bloomberg. Mike Bloomberg's philanthro colonialism is a threat to global health and science. Yeah. Former New York City Mayor Mike Bloomberg is in hot water overseas and potentially at home with members of the Philippine government accusing Bloomberg funded charities of illegally paying regulatory agencies to implement his anti-tobacco policies. While the general public may be shocked by the allegations, those familiar with Bloomberg may be less surprised, given his tendency to leverage his philanthropic largies as a means of influencing government policy, from funding tobacco control efforts to installing privately funded lawyers in state attorney general offices across the USA. Mike Bloomberg is just the worst kind of authoritarian type of person. Now, a few weeks ago, I mean, over the last few weeks, I think on TBN and sometimes here, we had been talking about Mike Bloomberg possibly, most definitely, breaking some US laws, some international laws. He gave a bunch of money to the FDA in the Philippines so that the FDA in the Philippines would implement the World Health Organization's tobacco control framework, which is protect cigarette sales at all costs and ban all other competing products, including nicotine vapor products and heat not burn products. And so the way that this shook out is the Philippines was going to have this virtual hearing on all of their vape regulations that were coming up. It's kind of like a, you know, quarantine, whatever, COVID, Zoom sort of type of meeting. And there was a politician in, you know, the Philippines, one of the, I think they're MPs. I think Philippines has a parliament. Am I wrong? One of the, one of the politicians, one of basically essentially the same version as like a Congress person, one of the Philippines MPs was questioning a person from the FDA. And they asked this person from the FDA, from the Philippines FDA, hey, person from the Philippines FDA, did you receive any foreign money from foreign money? Did you receive any of that? And his answer was, I have been instructed not to answer that question. Sure, absolutely, nothing fishy going on there. Nothing fishy going on there. And then after some more questioning and more and more questioning, eventually the FDA in the Philippines basically just said, okay, yeah, sorry. like, fuck, we took a lot of money from Bloomberg. Um, is that a problem? And the FDA, uh, the government of the Philippines kind of just said, yeah, okay, hard stop, hard stop. Members of the Philippine government have called on their FDA to return the funds and cease all interaction with the foreign charities until the House Committee on Good Government and Public Accountability concludes a thorough investigation. 
Such an investigation will undoubtedly uncover more evidence of improprieties by these charities in that country. But Bloomberg's effort to manipulate governments into restricting lower risk tobacco alternatives is far from limited to the Philippines. We have seen Bloomberg be very, very successful in the United States, right? Everybody listens to Matt Myers in the campaign for tobacco free kids, right? Hi, that's Bloomberg Philanthropies. Bloomberg has been very, very successful in the United States. What's everybody in the United States think about when they think about vaping, right? It's like, ah, youth epidemic, ah, lung injuries, ah, the flavor for, flavors are for kids, ah, vaping's not any better than smoking. That's just where we are in the United States. Bloomberg tried to get his greasy, gross, old man Muppet tentacles into the UK, and the UK kind of just went, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What? Okay, well, not only are we actively uh, deflecting you now, but we're actively going to attack uh, you now, which is why you see a lot of lawmakers in the UK just trashing, trashing Bloomberg. Bloomberg has no influence in the UK, and I love it. But he's done this in the United States, Canada, Ireland, uh, the Philippines, Vietnam, lots of other countries, and lots of like lower socioeconomic countries that are desperate for money. And then Bloomberg can come in with his like, hey, I've got billions with my weird Muppet face. And the government goes, hey, well, thank you so much, God. We really need money. What do we have to do to get this money from you, Mike Bloomberg? And all he does is go, well, all you have to do to get this money, just ban vaping. That's it. Protect cigarette sales at all costs, ban vaping and any other possible, any other possible alternatives. For example, this is an example. This is a for example of Bloomberg's uh, wonderful, just, you know, really like saintly, arguably saintly philanthropy. For example, in the aftermath of Armenia's 2018 Velvet Revolution, the new government sought to improve health and address the country's sky high rates of smoking. A recent documentary, the new health minister, Arsen Tornsyan, noted that the most of their support for tobacco control comes from the World Health Organization, but also noted that they recently signed a grant with the Bloomberg Foundation and the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids. So Armenia had a somewhat slightly violent revolution, you know, wanting to hold their government accountable. They succeed in this revolution. They install a new government. And then the first thing that the new government does is go to Mike Bloomberg for tobacco money. All of these people, all of these Armenians that were fighting against their government and fighting for freedom. Mike Bloomberg just came in and went, <laughs> fuck you guys. I know you just went through this big revolution where you're like holding your government accountable, but guess what? Your government just sold out their health department to me. Yeah, Mike Bloomberg. So maybe in Armenia where, you know, 58% of the male population smokes, hopefully, I mean, hopefully with Bloomberg's money, they'll just continue smoking. So Awesome. Good on you. Good, good on you. Good on you, Bloomberg. These are just a few examples of the vast and tangled global campaign. Bloomberg's strategy is proving effective, particularly in lower income countries with high rates of smoking. Those that would benefit most by having access to lower risk alternatives. This is a tr this is tragic for the millions of men and women in these countries who will continue to smoke and die because their government, at the behest of agenda driven foreign philanthropists, is stripping them of the right to make their own informed health choices, but it also has a deeply troubling implications beyond the issue of tobacco. Yes. How do we hold Mike Bloomberg accountable? What would be justice for Mike Bloomberg? I don't know. Fine him? Sure. You know, take some money from Mike Bloomberg. He'll go, oh, I don't even care. I donated $160 million to try to ban tobacco harm reduction products across the world. What's another hundred? You could fine Bloomberg a billion dollars and he would just go. That's him not even noticing that a billion dollars has gone from his bank account. It wouldn't mean anything to Mike Bloomberg. And the thing that's scariest about this and what Michelle Mitten points out is 
Bloomberg isn't elected. No one voted for him. He just has kind of named himself like, ah, I am just a powerful man with lots of money and I'm going to buy some governments. And no one's elected him. It's just unchecked, bureaucratic, white, rich guy power. And he wants, he wants all the health departments. He wants to eradicate less harmful alternatives and he wants combustible cigarettes to be the only option on the market until that purpose doesn't serve him anymore. And then he might completely eradicate all, all tobacco from the, from the face of the earth. He has the money to do that. And just looking at how successful he's been in the tobacco space, imagine, uh, imagine Mike Bloomberg with his Bloomberg billions getting involved in cannabis. It would be uh, devastating. It would be devastating. Mike Bloomberg is the worst kind of person. Oh, he's just the worst kind of person. I'll have a link down in the description to this Inside Sources article written by Michelle Mitten. It's incredible. And Michelle Mitten's just, you know, it's whatever. She's so smart and such a good writer. Um, start reading this. You won't be able to stop. I promise you it's spectacular. So let's see. What else do we have to talk about moving on from that? Oh, here we go. <laughs> Let's put this in the, uh, let's put, yeah, right? Nephron. Don't even go, don't even joke about that. Imagine that. Imagine Bloomberg philanthropies going after something like that. <laughs> and I mean, I know this is a logical fallacy that I'm presenting right now. I'm fully aware that this is a logical fallacy I'm presenting right now. It's the slippery slope fallacy where you can say, well, Bloomberg, well, he's just going to keep doing that thing. It's not so much of a logical fallacy when you're thinking about it in terms of Bloomberg, though, because when Bloomberg was mayor of New York, he tried to ban large sodas. Yeah, <laughs> large sodas. Did you want a large big gulp? Sorry, Bloomberg doesn't want you to have that. <laughs> it's kind of unbelievable. And I can't believe that so many people are like, People voted for Mike Bloomberg. People voted for Mike Bloomberg. Uh, anyway, Sally S. in the chat. Appreciate you being here. People saying hi to Sally S. I felt like I wanted to say hi to Sally S. I mean, and I kind of like, is that Sally Sattel? Is that my hero, Sally Sattel in the chat? I doubt it, but I would be honored if Sally Sattel was here tonight. Uh, let's move on to Michigan. Any Michigan vapors in the house? Show of hands. Michigan vapors. You love your, your governor, Gretchen Whitmer. You, you like her a lot. You like that? Any Michigan vapors? Well, you'll be happy to know. And I'm sure all of the drug dealers in Michigan will be happy to know that they have officially revived a bill to prohibit the sale of vaping products with vitamin E acetate. Thank God. Thank God. I hope you pick up on the sarcasm here. It's been uh, two years since Ivali, two years since Ivali, and now, after a nicotine flavor ban, yeah, because of Ivali, they did a nicotine flavor ban in uh, in Washington or in uh, in Michigan. Great. Now, two years after the end of Ivali, there hasn't been a case of Ivali in 19 months, 18 months, something like that. Not really sure. Now, Michigan, yeah, they, uh, they have this bill that's going to ban the sale of vaping products with vitamin E acetate. Good Lord. Too, too little, too late, too useless. Look at them. Look at Michigan trying to regulate the black market. This came from the black market. And the thing about criminals on the black market is they generally don't follow laws. Like, can you picture two dudes in their garage in Michigan, like filling up THC carts with like syringes, you know, and one dude's got the THC and one dude's got the vitamin E and they're filling up cartridges. And one guy, you know, with the vitamin E syringe, he goes, oh wait, bro, we can't do this anymore. I heard this was illegal. And the other guy goes, what we're doing right now is already illegal. And then the other guy goes, oh yeah, <laughs> cool. You're not, you're not saving anything. This is a superfluous law. This law doesn't mean anything. Sure, sure. If you catch someone adding vitamin E acetate in their garage to black market THC cartridges, 
Maybe you can haul them down to the station and, and, you know, give them the full letter of the law. Don't you know it's illegal to put vitamin E, acetate, and vaping cartridges? The great thing about this law is it affects nicotine vaping this much because you physically can't put vitamin E acetate into nicotine products. Fascinating. The committee voted to advance three bills involving vitamin E, acetate, and one bill amending Michigan's marijuana operating licensing law. The Centers for Disease Control strongly linked THC vaping products containing vitamin E acetate to illnesses that resulted in 60 deaths, including three in Michigan and more than 2,700 hospitalizations. Great. Okay, so now Michigan's listening to the CDC on what vitamin E acetate was during Evoli. This is great news. That can only mean, I can't even barely say this with a straight face. That can only mean, right, that in Michigan, maybe the flavor ban will be repealed because the reason that the flavor ban exists in Michigan is because of Evoli, is because of the lung injuries. Well, now Michigan is saying that, oh, the CDC said it was vitamin E acetate. Oh, so of course, that means that you'll, you know, repeal the flavor ban, you know, since it's had nothing to do with Evoli, you know, and everything to do with black market THC carts as you're admitting now, right, Michigan? What do you mean, no? What do you mean you're just gonna leave both laws on the books? What do you mean that's called the ratcheting effect of authoritarianism? Oh, okay, interesting. What's even more interesting is Representative Joe Bellino, he co-sponsored this. He co-sponsored this bill in Michigan and he said this, during the March 16th Regulatory Reform Committee, we don't wanna ban e-cigarettes. There are a lot of good e-cigarette manufacturers out there doing a great job and they're good products that are a huge step up from smoking cigarettes. We just want to ban vitamin E acetate, which when it's heated up to 300 or 400 degrees gets your lungs. It's a very dangerous substance. Yep. hundred I agree with all of that. I agree with all of that. 100%. I agree with all of that. You don't want to ban e-cigarettes but Michigan already kind of did by banning flavors. They know that, right? Let's just look. <laughs> Let's for once in our lives give the government of Michigan the benefit of the doubt. I'm sure they'll do the right thing and repeal the flavor ban now that they know and have admitted that all of the lung injuries were due to vitamin E acetate, so much so that they needed to pass a law banning vitamin E acetate. I'm sure the flavor, it's only a matter of time, you know? I'm sure it's only a matter of time before the flavors come back in Michigan. That's fine. Gretchen Whitmer, she's a terrible person. She's just a terrible person. Yeah, so uh, let's, uh, how are we doing on time here? Oh, okay, we're doing okay. We're doing okay. There is no, is there, is there a fla there's no flavor ban in Michigan right now? I thought there was a flavor ban in Michigan. i 100% sure there was. In fact, I think you're wrong. I think there might be a flavor ban in Michigan. There was a long, there was a while ago. Really though, is that two years Evoli happened in 2019. You're telling me the Michigan Department of Public Health drug their feet for two years before they finally decided to address, even say the goddamn words, vitamin E acetate? Well, while for years they blamed it on flavored nicotine vapes? That's, in, that's crazy. That is insane. It's, it doesn't make, it makes no sense to ban flavored vaping while vitamin E acetate and black market car. I mean, we've already been through this. We're beating a dead horse into the ground now. It makes no sense. It's like the online sales ban to protect youths from nicotine. They're not getting them online. We know this from CDC data, where they're getting them from. It's not online. An online sales ban to protect kids is like witnessing a car crash. Yeah. And then walking back to the to the bus that's 10 blocks away and then putting a band-aid on the driver to help the car crash makes it it makes no sense and see now i'm getting a little bit too ragey and i need to keep myself in check you know 
The, no ban now. It only lasted two weeks. Oh, great. Cool. All right. I, I think I knew that. And uh, those two weeks, that was a detrimental two weeks. That's why there's no Namber juice anymore. I was a felon in, in Michigan. Um, let's, uh, let's start wrapping up this news and advocacy segment. I want to just throw this out there because I think it's so great. I don't know if you guys are uh, aware of the website called, uh, Americans. No, it's called citizens against government waste. That's how we're going to end this news and advocacy segment. <sighs> citizens against government waste names, Frank Pallone, the March, 2020, Porker of the month, month, month. Now, I know this is a year old, but it doesn't keep it from being any less deliciously satisfying. Today, Citizens Against Government Waste named Representative Frank Pallone. That's uh, New Jersey. Yeah. Frank Pallone. You guys know Frank over there in Jersey. Our March 2020 Porker of the Month for wanting to ban flavored vaping products. On February 28th, the House of Representatives voted to pass Representative Frank Pallone's bill, the Protecting American Lungs and Reversing the Youth Tobacco Epidemic Act. He has a bill that he wrote called Protecting American Lungs that is a ban on vaping. Is there any protecting American lungs without vaping involved? No. No. No, Frank Pallone. No. The bill would prohibit the sale of all flavored vaping products. Representative Pallone's legislation would also impose a $9.9 billion tax on vaping products over the next 10 years. Yeah. Which would destroy tens of thousands of jobs. It has been proven that vaping and e-cigarettes are more successful than gum or patches to help people quit smoking. In the United Kingdom, there is no ban on flavored tobacco products. And a March 4th, 2020 report found that smoking rates continue to fall rapidly. And harm from vaping is incredibly rare. Representative Pallone's bill is blatantly ignoring the UK's success on vaping. Citizens Against Government Waste President Tom Schatz said Representative Pallone's main interest should be reducing the number of smokers across America. Instead, he is putting millions of Americans at risk who rely on vaping products to kick their deadly habits. Banning flavored tobacco products will discourage the smokers who only use flavors, driving them back to tobacco cigarettes. There will be a black market for e-cigarettes for those who cannot access the flavors, further endangering the health of millions of Americans. For trying to create a health crisis that can easily be avoided, Representative Frank Pallone is a deserving member of the March Porker of the Year. Porker of the Year. Do you ever ask yourself how someone can start, like, be elected to Congress as like a, a normal person, and then when they leave Congress, they're a millionaire? Doesn't that seem fishy to anyone else? God damn, seems goddamn fishy to me. So I'll put a link to that down in the description. Cheers, 15%. This is fun times. I think it helps me do the news and advocacy better. Okay, last thing, you guys. Last thing here in the news and advocacy, boosh. I'm gonna put this link down in the description. Bloomberg's Millions funded an effective campaign against vaping. Could it do more harm than good? This is maybe the single greatest thing I have read in the last years, years. Uh, it's incredible. It's incredible. And this all kind of stems from this dude, Cliff Douglas, who founded the American Cancer Society. He was a founding member of the American Cancer Society. We've been talking about Cliff Douglas excessively on TBN. This is all ki not kind of spawned by uh, Cliff Douglas, but this is an article in a philanthropy magazine. It's nine pages long. It's the longest read you'll ever read, but it is the single greatest case that I have ever heard for vaping and tobacco harm reduction. It's incredible. I'm gonna put a link down to it uh, in the description. I've read it multiple times. I'm gonna continue reading it and I'm gonna continue absorbing everything in this article. It is pages and pages long, dude. Pages and pages long. But I'm gonna put a link down in the description because I think it's just, uh, 
I think it's just that good. Uh, let's wrap up the news and advocacy. Thank you so much. Addie Tooney's throwing that link for vaping demystified for the Yorkshire Cancer Research Center in the chat. Click it, click it, leave it in a tab. Come back and watch it after the vlog. Um, it's going to be a good time. So that wraps up the news and advocacy. Let's do, I saw a whole mess of super chats come in. So let's do.
Whoa. Was it black that whole time? Did I just leave it on hard black that whole time? I wasn't even watching the I wasn't even watching the chat. I'm sorry. I was still talking. And it just went completely black. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, look, it wouldn't be a look, it wouldn't be a vlog without some dangle clacks, right? Uh thank you for the heads up there, Matthew. <laughs> I guess what we're going to do now is uh, you might see uh, something on here that says paid sponsor. It's this, dude. They're a sponsor of the vlog. It's the coldest water bottle. This is hands down the best insulated water bottle I've ever used. I'll have a link down in the chat. If you want to pick one up, you can use the code GRIM. Get 10% off. This literally never leads my side. I drink 64 ounces of water every single day. No, that was my bad. That was my bad. I wasn't even watching the chat. I wasn't even, I, you know what? It's whatever. Look, we, yeah, I know. You sat there the whole super chats with just a black screen. I apologize. It was just me. That was completely my fault the whole time. I know I could have done a bio break. Was that a 15 minute dangle clack? Ah! I'm sorry. Let's drink some water. Let's stay. <laughs> I know that was the dangliest. Rob, you're not just, you're, you're not just, that was the dangliest. That was the dangliest of all clacks. And I uh, tremendously apologize for that. Let's stay hydrated, Hydro Homies. Oh, I love water. I'm glad that I love water so much. It makes it easy to stay hydrated, Hydro Homies. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, stay hydrated, hydro homies. Okay, cool. So now, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? Let's open some mail. Yeah. Oh my God, I think I got to all those super chats that were there. Yeah, I think I did. We'll get we'll get back to the super chats in just a hot minute. I have some really cool mail that I'm pretty excited about today, but some of it feels, I can't help but feel like some of this feels a little bit bittersweet, man. Like, let's see, let's get, just go through this. I got a package from Eric, my good buddy, Eric Vinyl and Vapor. And it has like, I got this package in the mail and it had a very like, hey man, this might be the last vape mail you get from me kind of feel. And it was like, oh, Oh, yeah, you thought the World Health Organization got me? I'm sorry. I, that was my bad. That was 100% my bad. But we're back. We're back in action. And I know what this is. Mother effing Duchess. Duchess here? Where you at, Dutch? Where you at, Dutch? Oh, I did. Oh, that's right. It was just black. You didn't even hear my voice. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Hang on, hang on. I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I just did that. That was 15 minutes of just dead air. L let's go back. I don't even care. I'll I'll do this again. Where did we end up? Lusimo. Where have you been, Lusimo? I have missed you, Lusimo. I already said that. It's a hemo beer, Megadeth. Thigh master. That's right. Patrick. Uh, Grim Artisan Ales, Saboro, Saboro Pop sounds right up your street and on brand. Love from the UK, bro. L love back from the UK. Shout out to Theodore as well right there. You didn't say anything. You didn't have to. Thomas Crow. So I asked for jokes before. I asked for jokes. Thomas Crow says, what is EC short? What is ET short for? Has only got little legs. Ha! That's hilarious. <laughs> Only got little legs. Your pinned comment has been retracted. Yeah, I don't know why it does that, Fishy. I pin a comment every single time and I don't know. It 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 covers, it leaves it there. And then if I retract it, it just leaves like the the round like the the background of it there. I, I don't know. It bothers me. And I'm sorry. <gasps> I lost all my super chats. I refreshed my page and I lost all of my super chats. All right, I'm gonna read the last one that I don't even know who it's from. Hi, Nick, just swinging by to say hi. If you'll see my, see if you read my email. Unfortunately, I can't stay. I'll catch the replay tomorrow. Enjoy a beer on me. Thank you. Who is that from? Brandon, Brandon, thank you. All of the super chats, 
I'm sorry. Literally all of the super chats, I refreshed the page and all my super chats are gone. Can I go back? No, I can't even go back through the chat. Okay. Hey, there were some great super chats in there. Fishy was in there. Uh, Thomas Crow was in there. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm sorry. I, all my super chat literally just disappeared. Maybe they're still in here. Mm, who was you? Brandon. Okay, we got Brandon. Let's go back. Let's go back, baby. Zaddy Vapes. Tell a joke, you say. Flies keep sticking to Bloomberg's face because he's a big steamy pile of shit. Okay, that is a good. <laughs> okay, that's really good. That's really good. I apologize. I'm really upset that I lost all of those super chats. They literally just disappeared. I can't see them anymore. I'm sorry. Well, look, one dangle clack segment. One dangle clack segment. Okay, now let's get back to the mail. Should I do the bumper again? Is that going to be easier for you, Jeremy V? Okay, we don't need to do the whole thing. Let's open some mail. I'm sorry. I feel really I feel really dumb about those uh about that. That would be a chat clack. That was a huge dangle clack. That was the biggest dangle. That was <laughs> That was too many dangle clacks, but this package comes to me from uh Oh, what you guys know about mother trucking Duchess coils. Yeah, Duchess coils. He's one of my Yo-Yo Patreon Cool Kid Club members. And he sent me some coils. Look at this. He even comes with a little uh, business card. It says, I hope you enjoy your coils. I strive to provide premium quality coils for a premium experience. Please feel free to follow me on Instagram, Duchess underscore coils. If you want to share your photos and thoughts, feel free to tag me. It's a little... Uh, a little self-serving there, Duchess, wouldn't you say? Ooh, I got a sticker. What do you think? Big Duchess sticker right here? Just so that it says the name Duchess right here. Would that be cool? We'll see. But I got some coils. I got some Duchess coils. I like to give Duchess a hard time, but he's a good builder, and I like using his coils. What do we got? Some aliens. Fuck yeah, aliens. Some two and a half millimeters in here. Okay, that's a five. That's a three millimeter. There we go, Duchess. Two and a half millimeter, bro. That was the biggest daddy of all dangle clacks that has ever dangle clacked. I didn't even realize it. I was just reading. Why wasn't I looking at the chat? How was I not looking at the chat? I apologize profusely to you guys. Profusely. I'm just going to read these super chats. Stan says, here's a new super chat. Always cut towards yourself. Yeah. I, I, had a I knew I was supposed to cut one direction. Stan and I didn't know if it was towards my I didn't know if it was towards myself or against myself. Uh Dennis, uh question, how does Darth Vader order his steak? A dun 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 da dun. Oh, that's good. Don't inflate Duchess's ego more. Okay, I won't. <laughs> or will I? Duchess is like these are breeze tones killers, you guys. Breeze tones killers. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, too many inside jokes. Okay. So this package came from a uh, matching. This is from E Ping. Yeah, E Ping. Are you, are you in the chat tonight? Yeah, Eugene. Uh, do not. Okay. It says do not read on air. Let me quickly read this. Hi, Nick. This is for everyone. E Ping, part time vapor. Where are you at, part time? I wanted uh, you to try a four DIY liquids as per our DM. I also sent you the Trilogy XL 40 millimeter RTA for you to try out. I cannot wait. I finally found some Taco Bell kids' meal toys that were given. Oh, when the original Trilogy came out, I believe it is the full set, but not hold me to that. Holy crap. Yo, yo, part time vapor. Sorry for the chicken scratch. My penmanship sucks. Dude, my penmanship sucks worse than that. We, uh, me, I think between me and my patrons, we have, uh, we have the worst handwriting on earth. Oh my God. This is every Taco Bell Star Wars toy still in the package. Like that's a, that's a Death Star right there. That's the Death Star. 
That's the Death Star. John, uh, in with the super chat. What'd you have to say there? Oleg Drip Tip. Yeah. Oleg's Drip Tip. I'll put a link to his Instagram down in the description. That's 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 uh, that's the end result of that. I'll put a link down in the description to this guy's Drip Tips because they're great. I have a bunch of them and they're great. This is kind of incredible. That's the Millennium Falcon. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to open these, but that's the Millennium Falcon. This is a complete set. Oh my God. Wait, that's Boba Fett. That's a flying Boba Fett. Dang, in the pack, in the, even in the Taco Bell. Look, that's Boba Fett. And you can see that that's Boba Fett in there. No, you can't really. And then we got the Trilogy 40 millimeter and hang on. This is great. Dang, am I going to have to put this Trilogy 40 millimeter in my next uh, build stream? RTA even. RTA. Look at that. Trilogy 40. How big do you think this atomizer is? Oh my God in heaven. That is freaking stupid. Look at this. Do you see this? That's insane. That is a gigantic RTA. That is a gigantic RTA. 40 millimeter RTA. Open it. Build it right now, Sergio. Is that what you're telling me to do? Look at that thing. Holy crap. That is gigantic. I thought the uh, Aromamizer Plus V2 was big, but this is like just a gigantic jack deck, gigantic airflow. I'm assuming it has like a little wafer, like wafer slots to go down into that airflow because otherwise that is a mountain of airflow. That is a mountain of airflow. Yeah, I did ask people to tell jokes. I am going to give away some hoodies still tonight. How do I? Okay, that's closed. It's just like breathing. There's no resistance there. All right. Well, shit, we got a trilogy. Comes with some replacement glass. A whole ton of O-rings. Dang, bro. Well, shit, we might have to do some trading here. We might have to do some trading unless this is terrible and then I'll just clean it out and send it back to you. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding, part-time vapor. And then I got some, uh, I'm going to be careful here because these are some DIY e-liquids. And if there's one thing that I really like, even maybe more than trying like some new commercial e-liquids, I love trying DIYs. I just, I like... I like that I have like subscribers and like, you know, fans or whatever that are really talented. Like Jake's great. Jake Scrapwood builds mods. I've got coil builders in my Patreon. I got juice mixers in my Patreon. Talented, talented people. Here we got a simple apple fritter. We got my take on a root beer float chocolate without chocolate. What chocolate without chocolate? Yeah, does come with a larger capacity glass in there. I saw that part-time vapor. Whoa. That root beer tastes good. My take on a mojito. I like these names. I like these names of these flavors. That's just my version of a mojito. Hi. Whoa. Whew. That one uh, seems intense. Chocolate peanut butter coffee made with real coffee? Wait, part-time vapor, are you telling me you made e-liquid with real coffee? Hmm, that is a incredibly authentic coffee flavor. Dang, bro, all right, I I'm excited about these. In fact, it's gonna come to a point like, where the very random liquid tastings, it's going to be like all DIYs because that's all that's going to be left. It's just all DIYs. Thank you, Part-Time Vapor, for that. Very gracious of you. Too much alcohol. Too much alcohol. This is too strong of a beer. I can already feel it, and it's bad. 
Now this is this is the Eric. This was sent. Where does it say? Where is it? Yeah, here it is. From Eric and Dylan with love. And I saw this little note on here and I was like, this is going to be like one of, if not the last like package that I get from Eric. And God, it's sad. It just seems sad. Oh, it's going to be some tobacco. Oh, God, you guys. Okay, I, A, I got some great... These are my favorite stickers. These are my favorite stickers. I keep Eric on the bottom of my water bottle as well just because I like his face. <sighs> what? 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 <laughs> what? That's so rad. Holy crap, that is rad. This is a broadside double X. These just came out. Uh, I knew Dylan back in the day before he started straight up Supply Co. And he was broadside mods. And I loved the broadside mods. And of course, I'm going to... Th oh, that's slick. God, what a beautiful copper tube. What a beautiful brass tube. Hybrid 510 straight up Supply Co. logo on the button. Broadsides were uh, legitimately awesome, awesome mechs. They had an awesome switch. They had like that, that like, you know, call it style switch. It was really good. Hard hitting all around. Whoops. I guess it helps to put the button together correctly. Damn. 510 connection. 21700. Whoa, manual 510 pin adjustment. Dang, bro. That is a retro design. Holy shit. Can you just pull this out? Nope, you can't make it hybrid. Wow, that's crazy. 510 pin. When was the last time anyone saw a 510 pin? But it's a threaded 510 pin that you're probably going to have to, you know, adjust down and adjust for battery rattle. This is a... It's a weird flex to have this like old school design, but it's whatever. It's a broadside double X. And uh, I'm stoked on this, man. I was, uh, I'm not saying I was bummed, but I slept on like the launch of these broadsides because I have so many mechs. And I, as soon as I saw this broadside, I went, I want that, except I don't need it because I have literally a thousand mech mods. All right, we got some more stickers in here. We got some deep cut stickers. And we put a deep cut sticker like right here. That'd be that would work. And then it's liquids. <gasps> okay, wait. Okay, wait. Oh, I got a new coaster. A deep cuts coaster. Okay. Uh, and of course, I got uh, some of my favorite uh, e-liquids, deep cuts. Uh, 12 milligram Psycho Crawler is an incredible mouth to lung vape. Just an incredible mouth to lung vape. Scott Runyon's here. Better late than never. I got the new tobacco. Back off. Back off. I think that's cool as hell. Straight up, back off. Back off. I have been... Uh, Dying, dying to try Eric's tobacco, a sweet and savory tobacco. Should we just give it a little bit of a knuckle test right now? I don't see why we shouldn't. That's, that's, that's. Yeah, dude, that. Awesome. Awesome. Damn, that tastes good. Psycho Crawler, Straight Up Supply Co's uh, cake. This liquid is not for me. That's what I'm going to say. This is going to go in the, I'm going to pass, I'm going to pay this one forward, you know, to somebody else. 12 milligram. It's not bad, but, uh, whoa. And there's, oh, and a beer and a beer. And a beer.
Double Dog Double IPA from Flying Dog Brewery. Fuck yeah, Dylan. Dylan and Eric, seriously, thank you so much. You guys have always been so kind to me. Er, you know, Eric. Eric's just one of my favorite people on earth. And uh, you and Dylan both, man. You guys are just too kind. Um, Final and Vapor, he's, uh, he's just one of my favorite humans on earth. <gasps> what the crap? Where's go? Where's uh, where's bluegrass? I got a new diamond button for bluegrass for sure. That is like that stainless gray color with green spatter and a matching DNA controller for the billet boxes. Diamond straight up supply co panel and and Oh, straight up supply co uh clear clear billet box panels. That's sick. That's sick as tits. So what I'm going to have to do <gasps> and battery wraps. Thank you Dylan. Thank you Eric. You guys are uh fucking staples. Staples of the community, staples of the industry. We wouldn't be as in a in like we wouldn't I wouldn't have enjoyed myself in this scene and in this community nearly as much without Eric and Dylan being a part of it. Without straight up supply co, without broadside, without deep cuts. Just that's not a that's not that's not a community I want to be a part of. I don't want to be a part of a community that that doesn't celebrate Eric Vinyl and Vapor and uh, straight up supply co because they're great people. Great. Great. Ooh, I got some Duchess coils. Oh, see, I'm all excited and I'm geeking out. And I'm thinking, all right, what am I going to build with some Duchess coils? I'm going to put it on the broad side. We're going to vape some tobacco. Like I have a sickness and I just want to keep setting up setups. There's not, enough, uh, there's not enough setups in the world for me to set up. That could be just a, you know, a delusion of the 15% beer. It gets better better every sip I take. It gets better every sip I take. How is that possible? Answer me. <laughs> Answer me, Sim. I'm just kidding, Sim. How you doing, buddy? Okay, so that's the mail. Let's do a couple super chats and then let's, uh, let's do some mother trucking double retro vaping because that sounds fucking cool. Nope. See, I'm not even going to risk it. Not even going to risk it having the having the super chat bumper there. Um, Derek, don't inflate Dutch. That's right. Don't inflate Duchess's ego more. I like to. I like to do that. John. Oh, oh yeah. O Oleg drip tips. Uh, my funny won't fit. Damn it. Brad. Still pretty funny. Uh, I do have to give away a hoodie though. In fact, I'm giving away two hoodies tonight. Yo, yo, and Nick. Don't forget the cotton break and prime that's in the package. I know. I mean, how, well, now your coils are all over the ground because I went searching for the cotton bacon prime. But yes, uh, Duchess did send along, uh, I'm sorry, a, a little piece of, of cotton bacon prime. Pork fold. Those coils stay cloudy and vape like royalty. Duchess, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. When I vape Duchess coils, I feel stately. I feel like royalty, you know? I feel so stately. John, uh, why smokers are not shouting on the roads and protesting against the vape ban? They don't have enough lung capacity. <laughs> oh, I love a good joke at a smoker's expense. Um, actually, I don't. Mike Smider, man, how do you tell the difference between an oral and a rectal thermometer? By taste. That's super gross, Mike Smider, man. Super gross. Uh, Matthew Bloomberg is the joke. Oh, holy shit. That is, that's amazing, Matthew. That's an amazing joke. The joke is Bloomberg. <laughs> Have you heard the rumor about the butter? Well, I'm not going to spread it. <laughs> uh, Invisible Rasta in the chat. Hey, let me try to get your... Uh... Let's try to get your chat up here. It says, uh, did you hear about Kennedy Vapor closing? Thanks. And then a bunch of emojis. Yes, I did hear about Kennedy Vapor closing. It's very, very sad. He's having a big sale right now. 
I don't think it's the last we've seen of Kennedy Vapor. Hashtag just saying. Hashtag just saying. Um, Sally has no arms. Knock, knock. Who's there? Not Sally. That's right. Not Sally. Because as you established earlier, she has no arms. Comedy. Jesus. Jesus Bailey. Can I call you Jesus? My grandmother asked me why I tattooed a heart above my kneecap. I told her it's because I need love. <laughs> True story joke. I need love. You get it, you guys? Need, like a knee, like knee, like, ah, need love. I thought that was a good one. Okay. One more uh, super chat here from SVK. What did the toaster say, say to the slice of bread? I don't know. I want you inside me. Oh. Wow. A, a carbohydrate-related sex joke. That's a, that's an interesting one. Let me actually give out the... Uh, I, I just asked everybody, I said, uh, leave a joke. Like, uh, leave a joke. Sometimes I set up my stream real early, like 10, 11 in the morning on Thursdays. And I just will say, hey, th tell me a joke. Like, make me chuckle today. Um, there were two. There were two jokes that made me laugh and I'm going to give away two hoodies and I want both of these people to email me nick at grimgreen.com please with your hoodie size. But the first joke, uh, the first hoodie winner of the jokes is, uh, well, shit, it's Chunkmeister. This bloke said to me, I'm going to attack you with the neck of a guitar. I said, is that a fret? <laughs> Come on. Fret. Because... Guitars, frets, okay, whatever. Chunkmeister, you made me laugh, so you're going to win a hoodie. Please email me. And then the second hoodie winner, Matthew, said, uh, due to quarantine, I'll only be telling inside jokes. <laughs> Come on. That's hilarious. <laughs> inside jokes. You know, because inside the quarantine inside jokes. Oh, whatever. That's funny, Matthew. You made me laugh. So uh, shout out Matthew, a chunk meister. You're both going to get a free hoodie. If you email me, nick at grimgreen.com with your hoodie size, I'll send you a X smoker hoodie. They're cool. They're cool hoodies. Okay. Shoot. What time is it? Dang. Six o'clock. Plenty of time. Do you guys want to, were there any super chats that I missed? I think I got to, I think I got to all the super chats there. Uh, Chris Cullen said, what did one stormtrooper say to the other stormtrooper? Don't forget to duck. Ah, that's a Star Wars joke. I remember it. Seamus says, uh, did you hear about the guy who dipped his testicles in glitter? Yeah, it was pretty nuts. <laughs> God damn it, that's funny. That's pretty nuts because that's sometimes guys call their balls nuts and that's where the okay mike that mech soldier that's very gracious of you sorry mad late mad crazy late i was out with my wife and son at dave and buster's catch you on the replay mech soldier you need no permission from me to go with your wife and kids to dave and buster's which sounds delightful by the way would have loved an invite to that little shindig be late. Watch the replay. I just appreciate you guys no matter what. In fact, hashtag replay crew, make yourselves known. You know, I love getting to a vlog like the next morning and all in my comments, it just says, yeah, replay crew. And I'm like, yes, like, 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 make yourselves known replay crew. Finally, we got one from badassery here. Did you know the difference between toilet paper and a shower curtain? No, no. Aha. So you're the one. Sneaky, you, you sneaky, sneaky person. Let's, I'm going to have to bio break. There's just no way around it. So let's retro vape. And I apologize. This bumper is going to be too loud. I'll be right back as soon as I can go.
<laughs> yeah. Sorry. Not even close. Did not even close. Didn't not even... Good God, man. Not even close. So, uh, what we're going to retro vape tonight is uh, some old RDAs. I got two old RDAs here that I really wanted to vape. Uh, the other day on that Wednesday yo-yo stream, we were going through my box, through my uh, tackle boxes, trying to like figure out like, man, let's pick out some cool retro vapey toppers and things and the such as. So I got two RDAs tonight. We're going to be vaping. The first one, the first one's going to be easy. It's not even that much of a story. In fact, let me see. I'm going to put this cap on here and I'm going to see if you guys can just guess it. Yeah, let's just see. Let's just see if you can guess what atomizer this is, huh? All right, there it is. Get a good look. Get a good look there. You see what atomizer this is? No, I didn't think so. It's the mystery of the dangle clack. This is the, why didn't I release an RDA called the dangle clack? God, that would have been great. I know it is Denzel. It's weird watching without timestamps. It's just live, you know? You gotta just roll with the punches. Um, this atomizer, uh, let's see, I'll give you a hint. No, it's not the Phenom. It came out in 2000, eh, let's call it 2015, 2015. It starts with a P, but it's not the Phenom. <laughs> it starts with a P, but it's not the Phenom. No, no, no. Okay. Look, I feel like nobody's going to get this. It's not the Phenom. Do not vape the coffee e-liquid. It was done doing a home extraction process that is not safe. Liquid pneumonia, lipid pneumonia. Okay, well, look, I don't want that. Uh, let me hit up part-time vapor and see what the deal is. If he's vaped it, I feel like it's pretty good. This right here, I, 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 I see you there, Addy Tooney. Thank you very much for trying to keep my lungs safe. I appreciate that. I will I will deal, delve further. Up oh, digital vapor den. Yeah, you buddy. Not quite, but it is, the, this is the Plume Veil. Good eye too, Digital Vapor Den, good eye. It's the Plume Veil, this is actually the Plume Veil 2.5. This was, AetherTech was the first company I think that I have ever seen do a non-sequel to their device, to their, to their, to their RDA. They did uh, the Plume Veil and then they did the Plume Veil 2.5. It was really very bizarre. It has some top airflow. It's got some side airflow. I'm going to close off this top airflow. No. Here, let's, uh, let's get this all the way out then. Okay. Interesting. It's got some top airflow. It's got like a chuff cap on top. It's got a slot. It's got dots. This is a time in atomizers when it didn't matter if you had a good design. It didn't matter if you had a good deck. It didn't matter if you had good airflow. All you needed in 2015 to sell 100,000 atomizers was to A, release an atomizer, and B, name the atomizer something real slick and catchy, Plume Veil. Plume Veil was like, People wouldn't shut the fuck up about plume veils. Plume veil, bro. Plume veil. Plume veil. You never done a plume veil? It was like the Stellaire and the plume veil were both like, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, plume veil. Oh, plume veil. When really the plume veil, it's a four post deck with airflows that slots. That's it. Nothing, nothing hyper revolutionary. Nothing, nothing. Vaping was so new in 2015. All you had to do was release an RDA and it would sell like crazy, crazy because people were just anxious for vape stuff and anxious for new products and new things. There were so many RDAs that got released in 2015 that made people millionaires and were essentially just like, ah, it's a three post deck. That's it. That's literally fucking it. It's a three post deck with like two airflow holes and hi, it's 80 bucks. Welcome. Welcome to vaping. So 
I just got a really simple little round wire build in this Plume Veil 2.5 going real old school. This is 24 gauge uh, Nichrome Anarchist, two and a half millimeter, about an eight wrap, came out to uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.36. It's, uh, nope. Nope, I'm gonna have to redo the settings on this DNA again. I'm gonna be running it on this Jake Scrapwood DNA 250C, which, measure again, measure again, measure again. Okay, yes. I'm gonna put some baked uh, cornflake sugar cookie on here. This is, a, this is a liquid that my wife created. I didn't realize she was quite the talented little flavor artist, and uh, we created some pretty incredible liquids while Dwayne was here. And this is one of them. This is one of them that uh, I just love. I can't get enough of. Casey's grandmother makes uh, cornflake cookies, and they are incredible. We have the recipe. We make cornflake cookies all the time. They're just incredible cookies, and this liquid tastes exactly like that cookie. So, okay, well, let's see. 0.3, what do you want to do, like 66 watts? Yeah, I feel like that's pretty good. Yeah, fizz. Do you hear the fizz? This is the opposite of what a crackle should sound like. That's how all like mesh sub ohm tanks sound. That's how most round wire builds sound. Oh my God, that smells amazing. Now the plume veil cap, as you saw, was slots and then dots as well. They were like airflow dots that I guess you could use, hang on, like this, but you could only ever use like two of the dots at a time. It's really bizarre, really bizarre. So let's just use the slots. And there was also like top in slots. Didn't make any sense. Wait till you see this other atomizer that I have tonight. Boosh. Okay, Plume Veil 2.5, vaping like it's 2015 with some cornflake sugar cookie. Uh, 0.366 watts, mother truck and cheers. Dude. Amazing. It's vaping good. This flavor is actually banging. Banging flavor. Cornflake sugar cookie. This is a really good atomizer. Okay, I take back some like some bad things I said about the plume veil. The airflow is easily as smooth as like a rye, easily as smooth as like a recoil OG. I don't know how they did it because usually Cyclops airflow slots like this are just rough. They're just rough and turbulent every single time because it also has an inner AFC. And when you have two pieces of metal like moving against each other like this and an opening, if the opening gets like this or it's not chamfered on the inside, it leads to turbulence, awful turbulence and whistling. I'm pretty confidently saying this airflow is crazy smooth. I don't even know if I could get this to be a turbulent airflow. It's not possible. Can you hear it? It just feels smooth. It just sounds smooth. Really great flavor. Uh, no crackle to speak of. No crackle. Uh, no crackle at all. We might get some uh, some crackle off of our second retro vape. I really like this airflow. I really like this airflow. Damn. Plume Veil 2.5 fucking holding up hard. I don't even know if you can get a Plume Veil 2.5 anymore. Even a clone. Let's see. Veil 2.5. <laughs> nope, out of stock. Dude, out of stock everywhere. No, not Plume Veil. Plume Veil. Aethertech Plume Veil. 
Let's see. RDA, Rebuildable Atomizer. I agree. Out of stock, but holy shit. When this for Atomizer first came out, are you kidding me, dude? $89. $89. Is this, let me take a vape from this and determine if it's worth $89. Oh, we're doing a random liquid tasting. Don't even trip, brain ding. Okay, that's kick ass. That is a great atomizer. Plume Vale 2.5, you are gonna hang out on this. I'm gonna put this Plume Vale 2.5, maybe it won't work very well in this mech. Ah, it's not bad. Aethertech Plume Vale 2.5 is staying alive on my UL Soul Keeper. God damn it, that's a good vape. I didn't, I'm, I am shocked. I am shocked that that is vaping still so well. It's kind of incredible. So, the, incredible. So, this next retro vape that I have, I'm sorry, let me just get a little, one more pull off of this plume veil. I mean, Jiminy, Jiminy Christmas. It's just vaping so well. Just round wire. Just round wire. Okay, so the second RDA I have for retro vaping tonight, I think came out in 2016. And up until I built this, I build all my, like, um, the retro vapes and the random liquid tasting, I build and wick, like, maybe 15, 20 minutes before the vlog starts. So I'm sitting here, like, rebuilding, re-wicking, whatever, and I thought... On Wednesday, we were going through the tackle boxes of like atomizers and Lee, not the real Gerard Butler. I know you're here tonight. Don't try to hide from me. You, he's like, Tobe, look, get, get a Tobe, find a Tobe. So I was like, fuck yeah, I'll find the Tobe and we'll retro vape the Tobe. And I grabbed out an atomizer that I really thought was the Tobe. It just said j on the side and it was a little banger. And I thought, hey, look, I found it. I found my Tobe. This is not the Tobe. That deck that deck is not the Tobe. That deck's not the Tobe. What deck is that? Does anybody guess? I'll give you a hint. It is a J Bow atomizer, but it is not the Tobe. This was when J Bow went all uh, went all whismecky. There you are, Lee. Lee told me to get out the the Tobe. This is not the Tobe, Lee. I thought this was the Tobe. This is not the Tobe. This is the most, this is the single most annoying deck on the history of America. I, I hated, hated building on this deck. Kyler for the win. Fuck yeah, bro. That is the indestructible. What? I had no idea I had an indestructible A, but yeah, that's the indestructible. Right now, I have the indestructible RDA. In fact, I think I put a build on this. Uh, let me try to find the picture. Uh, oh my God. Uh, no, I don't have a picture. Eh, I thought I had a picture. Where's my phone? I built, a, I put a picture of this build. I took a picture of it. I know I did. Yeah, there it is. I don't know why you guys, uh, I don't know why this is in my deck. Can you see this? No, no, uh, that's the build I put on it. That's the build. It's it was just a set of Fuse Claptons that I got from uh, this fella right here, 570 Customs. I've been probably hanging on to this set of coils for eight years. I don't even know, maybe longer than that. But I eventually got them in here. And the frustrating thing about this Indestruct, did anybody have an Indestructible RDA? Holy crap. The most frustrating thing about this indestructible RDA was everything about it. Building it is stupid, dude. The low, the, the center, first of all, is higher than the edges, which should be the opposite. That's fine, Jabo. The lower ones are in this little cave. Like there is metal and machining in front of your negative lead. So getting your negative lead in here, stupid. Also, Take a look at the center, uh, where'd it go? Uh, here it is. Take a look at the center, that center pin. 
Notice a few things. A, it's just a big round opening with two, you know, uh, Torx, not Torx, but uh, Phillips head screws, not Phillips head, God damn it. <laughs> Allen key screws. So you have to make sure that your lead is directly under the screw because if it's like, whoops, that is the indestructible. If it's off a little bit, the screw's just gonna go dunk right next to it or dunk right next to it or dunk right on the edge of it. Obnoxious, obnoxious RDA to build. I don't even know why I stuck with it for so long. I was like, no, we gotta do a double retro vape, man. Let's try the indestructible, okay? 2015, 2016, this is the indestructible from j when he went to go work for Wismac. Now, the thing you need to learn about j I'm sure you guys are hip to j -Bo. He had a YouTube channel for a while. He worked with Wismac for a while. He, re he released some juices for a while. But j got his start as a modder in the vape scene, and he released the very first like low-pro atomizer called the Tobe. And it was amazing. It was just a little dual coil banger, tiny, tiny little flavor banger. And the Tobe became one of those like, you know, legendary atomizers in the vape scene. Everybody wanted a Tobe. Everyone was vaping a Tobe. Oh, you got a Tobe? Have you tried the Tobe? You want to try the Tobe? I got a Tobe. Did you get a Tobe? The Tobe. So j kind of had this like, oh, who made the Tobe? Oh, it was j -Bo. j -Bo. Jabo made the tobe. And later on, Jabo and I actually became like pretty decent friends. Like he's a good dude and I really like Jabo. And when right when he right when he got his like legendary vape scene status, it's like, oh Jabo made the tobe. It's like he instantly went to go work for Wismac and then Wismac started cranking out like Jabo type of products. And it was kind of like a golden age in the vape scene. Like Jabo was creating so much good shit with China, but unfortunately, Jabo also released this piece of junk, which is known as the indestructible. These coils ended up at a point two. I, I would be shocked. I would be hard pressed to find any uh, crackle happening off of this. So we're going to turn it to 70 watts. Okay. Okay, Jabo. Now, the top of this, also, I wish I had a picture of the stock top. I don't have the stock top. I'm going to have to use a, uh, a, a an imposter sort of chuffed, chuff cap on this, but it was just holes, unadjustable holes, and there was a cutout for a single coil on the back. And you could run a single coil on this, and it was really hyper difficult. This had an air, It's this had a little cap on top with like heat sink fins, okay? And the heat sink fins had airflow. In addition to the side airflow coming in from the barrel of the atomizer, you also had airflow that was coming in from the top and it was just little holes, little holes, right? It made no sense. This airflow was completely, completely useless, j -Bo. Air takes the path of least resistance. So let's say, hi, this represents your drip tip, right? And you're putting your big, your big mam, your big jammies on this, right? On your drip tip. And then right below the drip tip, there's a hole that goes down, right? And then way down here, you have your coils. So you mean to tell me you think this air coming in the top right here is gonna travel all the way down the barrel, get to your coil somehow, and then go back up your drip tip? Not a chance. That airflow is gonna go straight down that hole and then just boop, straight in your drip tip. Straighten your drip tip. All it did was add completely unnecessary airflow to this atomizer, but it's gone. It's lost and I can't find it. So I had some chuff caps like this that don't quite fit on there. But then I found this guy from Subohm Innovations, Boop, that just sits down on there and fits flawlessly. This is a 22 millimeter atomizer. It's loaded up with Peach Slide, which is what uh, Lick It became, Smacks Lick It. RIP Smacks, I love you, Tyra. I'm so sad to see Smacks. I'm so sad to see Smacks go. 0.2, 70 watts, not the Tobe, the indestructible RDA. Let's give it a shot.
That's actually vaping uh, really, really well. No crackle I anywhere. There is no crackles. Michelle Lynn, is this the cap you're looking for? Oh, let me see. No, that is not. That is the cap for j -Bo's other weird-ass atomizer that he made with Wismec that I really, really liked as well. I think I've done that one on a retro vape, but the original cap to this j -Bo Indestructible is gone. I never used it with the original cap. I only used it with other chuff caps on top, other chuff caps on top. But I will say, look, this thing is a bitch and a half to build, a bitch 9,000 to build but it's vaping really well. Really well. Really, really well. Yep, yeah, that is the top from the Sub-Zero. Good eye. Good eye there. Yeah, that's the top from the uh, Sub-Zero, Sub-Ohm Innovations. Still, like I love that atomizer. This is so enjoyable, I just want to keep using it. There's no need to purchase any vape gear past 2016, dude. Everything was already done back in the day. Maybe not like billet box bridges or the abyss or something, but as far as RDAs go, you don't need to look past 2016. Okay, so the Indestructible, awesome. The Plume Veil 2.5. Also vaping awesome. In fact, both of these atomizers, I will say, are vaping just as good as literally anything on my desk, man. Let's compare this Jabo, Jabo Indestructible to the Rye. This came out in 2020. Damn good. Also, damn good. The only reason I'd pick the Rye above the J-Bow Indestructible is the Rye is actually easy to build because it's a modern atomizer and it wasn't like, hey, let's let's get rid of let's get rid of post holes and let's just make big post gaps that you have to obnoxious, obnoxious to build. So what I would like to do right now, we're already over two hours. Holy shit. Look, there's no slowing this train down. Uh, do you want to taste some liquid? I need your guys' uh, votes. Then we'll do some super chats and then we'll listen to some Christian death metal. Oh, you thought the vlog was gone again. I'm just kidding. Ah, so... We have two liquids that we're going to very random liquid taste. These are the two liquids that have been, I don't know, I don't want to call it stuck, but they've been stuck in the very random liquid tasting. And I figured this is a way that we can actually get to taste them. So I'm not adding a new one tonight. The two that we're going to vote from are punk juice. This is called scum. This is a cherry cola. This is from Juice My Way. This is called So Berry Good. Now, let's vote Scum Berry. Scum or Berry, Scum or Berry, Scum or Berry. Let the voting commence as soon as the lag catches up in 20 minutes. Scum or Berry, Scum or Berry, Scum or Berry, Scum or or Barry. It is. That's an incredible riff, Brandon. I rock out to it every fucking time. Fishy's telling me to hydrate. All right. I'll hydrate while you guys vote. Scum or Barry. Scum or Barry. Jubbies. We got some vote for... <laughs> I will never not laugh at Jubbies. Derek, I see you there, Jubbies. Scum, scum, scum. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Barry, Barry, Barry. Whoa, Barry's making a comeback. Barry is making a comeback. Barry, 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 Barry. Uh oh. Scum, 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 sc
Barry scum, scum, scum. Jubbies, Kevin Chocolate <laughs> Scum. Okay, I think the voting has commenced now. We're going to end the voting segment, and I think we're ending up with scum. This is the chance for this e-liquid company to redeem themselves a little bit. I tried a punk juice earlier in the month, and it wasn't for me. You know, it just wasn't. Uh, hang on, let me get a uh, let me get a nicotine because this is uh, short fills. Short fills. So we have to take a nicotine. We have to pretend like we're in the UK where they, you know, celebrate vaping and uh, encourage their citizens to switch to vaping without hesitation and uh, and the such as. So let's add some. Uh, this is going to take forever because I have to do it through this because I can't pull the top off. But that's okay. We're just gonna we're just gonna push this in here. Let's actually hydrate while we're filling this up. You think we can do it? I think we can. Oh, I love water. I'm glad that I love water so much. It makes it easy to stay hydrated. Hydro homies. Sometimes I just like to leave it on Kent's face there. Rigged? Rigged Neferon? You get that shit right out your head. Nothing is ever rigged on this YouTube channel. What, are you kidding me? Just squeezing nicotine. Just squeezing nicotine. Stole the vote. Stop the steal. Sorry. Scum won. Whether you, whether you like it or not. Scum won. I like cola flavors. I don't care what anybody says. I like cola flavors. And I'm interested, really interested to try this cherry cola flavor. Let me shake it up. We're going to be tasting it tonight on our very own Twisted Messes 24 Pro Series with his Staggertons on the inside on top of the DB or the Def Mods Guar Box. I haven't had the Guar Box out in a while. And if, look, if, if you want to know why, it's because I set this aside with the Aromamizer Plus V2 RDTA on top because all I wanted to do was vape the Guar Mod with the Aromamizer Plus V2 RDTA on top. And so I kind of set it aside as like, yes, that's your goal. Build that, vape it, just do it. Two months, yeah, two months. This Guar Mod sat with the Aromamizer Plus V2 RDTA on top of it right over here in no man's land, nothing. Just didn't, <laughs> nothing. Never built it, never nothing. So it's whatever. I'm not gonna let the scum, Joel, Joe. We, we, we're vaping it. We're vaping it, Joe. We're vaping it. <laughs> Sayer, Sayer Ming from the Philippines. Watch out for Bloomberg. I'm rooting for the Philippines, man. I'm rooting for the Philippines hard. I'm rooting for the Philippines hard. I'm rooting for Indonesia hard. I'm rooting for Vietnam really hard. England, don't need to root for England. The EU, uh, Ireland, the United States, and Canada, those are who I'm rooting for. So let's do a quick little knuckle test here of this cherry cola. Dang. Um, it definitely has some culotta in it. That's usually what happens with like cola flavored e-liquids is everybody wants that like you know cool cola crispy kind of carbonated feeling to it right but i got some stagger tins oh this is going to be great i'm so excited about this shit man let's taste some uh let's taste some e-liquid let's taste some uh let's taste some uh punk e-liquid um should we just run long fuck it let's just run long i don't even give a heck anymore let's run long um i'm gonna mute my microphone i'm gonna sit hang on first of all let me just take one toot off of this first before i sit back with it and sort of evaluate it as it were okay punk juice Okay, I'm gonna sit back with this. It's not gonna be that long. I'm gonna mute my mic and you're gonna hear some hold music. Let's hang out.
Okay. 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 Um. Uh. Sorry, punk juice. Sorry. Really sorry. I've tried two punk juices now, and both of them are bad. Like, I don't want to vape them bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. We tried a punk juice a few, like a month ago, and it was bad. It tasted like a candle. Um, this scum is a fizzy cherry cola. I taste cherry cola for sure easily cherry cola, right? It definitely tastes like cherry cola. Cola is one of the first like liquids back in 2009 that I ever vaped. I bought apple and I bought cola and I don't know why. I didn't really love either of them. I kind of liked the cola, which led me to get root beer and root beer is what eventually got me off of cigarettes. This tastes like a cherry cola, but there is so much culotta in here. It's it's literally painful to vape. It is actually like, I don't want to vape it. It's just such a negative experience. It's so like, you can feel it in your sinuses. You can feel it down your throat. It's like culotta. It feels like there's more culotta in here than there is cola flavor. It feels like there's more culotta in here than there is cherry flavor. This feels like sap bois. This feels like sap bois from the, from Indonesia. It's so culotta out. I can't, I can barely vape it. Every drag is painful. Every drag is painful. And I can still, <sighs> culotta, I know, Rick Martin, you did say jubbies, you know, damn it. I really dropped the ball here. I thought we, <laughs> you know, we could have had jubbies. We could have had some GD jubbies instead of culotta overload 9,000. It's so culotta, it's painful, and that's just where I'm going to leave this right now. I've had, I've had good cola. I've had good colas. One of my favorite. There was a e-liquid company, 2016, I think, called Fizz, and they had a lemon lime soda. Oh my fucking god, it was so good. Could be WS23. Whatever's in here, it's either Culotta or WS23, and it's like they just eyeballed it. I feel like they measured the cola. Like they're like, okay, this much cola, this much cherry. I'm going to dump the WS23 in now. Just tell me when to stop. Still not? Still? Okay. That's what I taste. It's it's It hurts. It's legitimately like culotta overload. It's kind of a bummer because if this had had a fraction of the culotta in it, it would be spectacular. It would be a stellar cola vape. Sri Lanka Baba, if you want culotta, hi, welcome to Punk Juice's Scum. Fizzy, yeah, fizz, fizz, was it called fizzy or fizz? I don't remember, but it was delicious. My brother loves cola flavors. I like cola. I like root beer flavors. Sorry, punk. Sorry, punk juice. You're two for two, man. You're losing. And I have like seven more bottles of punk juice. So that should be interesting. <laughs> I'll do some very random liquid tastings on those bottles of e-liquid. That's ridiculous. All right, shit. Well, uh, here, let's save the super chats for just a second. Sap bois. Sap bois. If you've never tried sap bois, you should really give it a try. <laughs> Get, Indonesia, sap bois. Really good. Um, here's how we're going to end this stream tonight, you guys. I really appreciate you coming out. God damn it. This has just been the most fun of the week. Let's do getting to know Grim Green, uh, and then we'll finish it up with some super chats. Do I not have? There it is. Okay, okay. Hi, everybody. How you guys doing? Good? Fuck, it's been a fun night, you guys. Let's, uh, now we're going to do some getting to know Grim Green. If you want to get to know me, just a little bit better. What we've been doing is talking about music, dude, because I love music. 
huge music fan. I've been in fucking 15 bands in my life. Um, I just love music and I've been on a vinyl buying kick lately. And every week we've been showing like a new record and putting some songs on the getting to know Grim Green Spotify playlist. But what we're going to do tonight, like we did last week, is we're going to listen to some of my old Christian death metal. Now, tonight's going to be a little bit different because this song that you're going to hear tonight from my old band, The Uplifted, it's called uh, Twisted Dementia. And it is a banger. It is one of my favorite songs. Um, my buddy Jim and I, you know, we've been talking about playing music again together and Twisted Dementia is one of the songs that we both agreed. We're like, so we're just gonna play that song again, right? Like note for note, maybe change the lyrics, but maybe not. Just just leave all the overtly heavy-handed Christian messaging in our lyrics. I think it would be fun. And this is a, Oh my God, this is a banger of a song, you guys. And uh, what I have done here is I had some old video footage of us performing. I think it was a concert in Washington State. I think we were in Tacoma, Washington. I'm not 100% sure. It might have been Modesto, California. <laughs> it was either Modesto or, or Vancouver, Canada. I'm just kidding. I think it was Modesto, California. And this was an old, like digitized tape and the tape didn't have any audio on it. It's just us on stage. No, I remember this show now. It was at Satyricon in Portland, Oregon because our other guitar player, Chris, was in the band. We became a four piece this year. This was in, I'm gonna go ahead and say 1998. Ah, 1998 or 1999, but this is, my old band, The Uplifted, were playing Twisted Dementia. The music and the video don't go together. We're playing a completely different song and sometimes we're not playing at all and I'm barely in the video. But it's this weird bootleggy video that I managed to get. And uh, so this is The Uplifted. This is Twisted Dementia. Let's get into it. Oh. See, we're not even playing live yet. That's not me, that's my buddy Jim. My vocals are coming up next. This is me. Breakdown. That's me with the hat on right there, and I got a bandana in my back pocket because I thought it was really cool. Yeah. 
Oh my God. I love that song. I love that song. I still remember how to play that song. I still remember all of the lyrics to that song. And when I tell you guys that they're overtly Christian, it is crazy. It's it's crazy overtly Christian, but I love it. You know what? And it doesn't matter. And someone was mentioning, um, was it Patrick Conquest? So shout out Patrick Conquest. He went and bought an old uplifted CD on Amazon for like $30. It's ridiculous. Overtly <laughs> crazy overtly Christian lyrics. And we were like a Christian death metal band. We called ourselves a Christian death metal band because we were playing Christian shows and we were playing at churches and Christian festivals and things like this. The death, de saying death metal, saying Christian death metal, the death metal is just a genre. You know, we didn't, um, we didn't like to say, oh, we're life metal or we're holy metal or something like that. It's like, no, we're a death metal band. Like that's what we play is the style is death metal death-ish metal, like death hardcore kind of shit. And, uh, but all of our lyrics at that time, overtly, I mean, you didn't know it, but you, you all just got saved. You didn't even know it. We're doing an altar call at the end of the, at the end of the vlog, but you all just got saved. You didn't know it. You're all going to heaven now just from listening to that one song. It's pretty cool. <laughs> but that is, uh, just another song. That's actually an older song. Twisted Dementia was one of the earlier songs that we had ever written, my buddy Jim and I, and we kind of just kept it going like through all of these bands, like even when we were called Puppet, even when we were called Driven and we were called The Uplifted, we kept this song, Twisted Dementia, going because we just loved it so much. And even like fucking 20 years later, if we get back together, that song will be in our, in our lineup 100% fucking Twisted Dementia. That is on a, it doesn't even exist anymore. The only place you'll ever hear Twisted Dementia was just now. It's not on the internet anywhere. It's not available on vinyl or CD or seven inch or eight track or anything. The only place that this really exists is on my computer and my buddy Jim's computer. And I miss it. You know, I talk about this every week, but I miss playing music and every vlog makes me want to go play bass and go play guitar and like write some more fucking metal songs because that is some of the most fun shit you'll ever have. You are Rolo. You don't even know you're saved. It doesn't matter. Mr. Plake, you don't feel saved. You are, you're going, I'll see you there, man. I'll see you at the pearly gates. I'll see you at the pearly gates. And you got there just from listening to uplifted. Yeah, unblack metal. See, that's what, see, that's what, that's why we didn't call ourselves like holy metal or anything. It's because there was, there was a few very scant, like scattered Christian black metal bands and they played like straight up dark throne mayhem style black metal, except they called themselves unblack metal. And I thought that's so dumb. It's just the genre of music. You know, it's like if there's a Christian hardcore band, you just, you're like, oh, we're a hardcore band. You wouldn't be like, oh, we're a fucking Godcore band. You know, we're a spirit core band. It's like, nah, you're just a hardcore band. It's just the genre of music, you know? So hardcore bands, black metal bands, Christian death metal bands, rebirth metal. I like that. <laughs> I like rebirth metal. <laughs> Rebirth metal. No, I can't jam for you tonight, Chris Mix World. Maybe at some point, um, maybe at some point I'll try to do some uh, death metal vocals. I, I'm really hyper out of practice. I used to have, you know, I talked about this last week. It's like you had to learn how to do it to not fuck up your throat. And I, I promised I would like try to teach some people how to do some death metal vocals. It's not that difficult. It's a combination of whispering. It's like, oh, uh, and you just comes from the diaphragm. You vibrate your vocal cords. Uh, I can't, I don't know. I can't do it right now, but I used to do it really low. And one of the things that I loved doing with my vocals was once I found my vocal style, I could go up or down from there. So I had this like monotone vocal style, uh, like one note, but it got really, really boring with vocals that are all in the same key. Like it's like, uh, just monotone, boring vocals. So what I started experimenting with was like trying to go, like as low as I possibly could and as high as I possibly could. It's difficult. It's a difficult throat workout for sure. Anyway, that's just some old Christian death metal reliving some of my glory days from uh, being in a 
rarely noticed, rarely played, lightly attended shows, Christian death metal band, mostly playing in church basements and the such as, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. If I could go back in time and uh, sing Twisted Dementia, I definitely would. I definitely would. <laughs> lyrics are throaty. Those, ly <laughs> those lyrics taste throaty, bro. <laughs> Um, okay, so cool. Look, let's do. Let's wrap this up. Let's. You guys want to hang out and do some super chats? Cause I do. In fact, that's all you get. That's it. That's enough super chats. I'm. I'm so far behind on the super chats. I apologize. Uh, don't you remember where I left off? Uh, Gabe. Wait, wait, wait. Guardian. Wait, wait, wait. Shit, wait, wait, wait. I'm so far back here. I am so, I'm so sorry. Badassery. Do you know the difference between toilet paper and a shower curtain? Okay. I think that's where we left off. Seamus. We got Seamus. Green third eye. Where does Han Solo store his things while traveling? In the carbonet. <laughs> Funny. Doesn't quite earn you a hoodie. Amanda. I was a dual user in 09 uh, to 12. Been full-time since my birthday and vacation start tomorrow. Cheers to all that have shown vaping. Who needs it? Yes. Bjorn. Bjorn. I'm going to call you Amanda and Bjorn. That's awesome. Kyler. I remember buying uh, RDA after RDA. I go W4. Dark Horse. Doge. Anything. And trying my friend's Mutation X thinking this is what I need for clouds and flavors. Turns out I just sucked at building and wicking. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yes. I had that realization too. I mean, not forever ago, but like in 2012, 2013, I was really resistant to drippers. You guys, I was really like, eh, that's just a fad. No one's going to be dripping for that long. No one needs to cloud chase. That's just a fad. And I tried it and I didn't like it. And I tried it and I didn't like it. Same thing. Turns out I just sucked at building and wicking. And once I got that down, fucking loved cloud chasing after that. Schaefer's vaping and music. Been watching for years and just wanted to give some back. Oh, eight years now. Daily driving a Valhalla 42 V2 40 millimeter on the Steam Crave Titan PWM. Bro, Schaefer. That's kick-ass. Guardian Dog John, you didn't say nothing. You didn't have to. Vaping case says, bro, I got arrested and caught a vaping case. Comedy. Thank you, vape. So, vape, Gabe Claus. What kind of money do reindeer use? Bucks. Not your strongest, Gabe Claus. Not your strongest. Fishy, how are you doing, buddy? Any possibility you would part with that Soul Keeper? Oh, Fishy. Uh, slim to none. Slim to none. Slim, slim to none unless that person is named Fishy. Then, shit, man. If you're a patron, you get to break all sorts of rules. I break all sorts of rules for the patrons. So, Fishy, you got your eye on the Soul Keeper? Let's talk. Ryan, uh, did you see the Hog DNA 400? No. Who cares? 400 watts? The fuck is the point of that? Okay. I have a car that goes 500 miles an hour. What's the max speed? 500 miles an hour. Do you ever use it? Nope. Okay. <laughs> What's that DNA go up to? 400 watts? Holy shit, what do you use it at? 80. Kyler, building the indestructible is a pain. Uh, yeah, but I'll be damned if it doesn't vape like a fucking champ. It really does vape really well, Kyler. I'm surprised. Derek, jubbies. <laughs> do you stock jubbies at your, at your shop, Derek? Because <laughs> cornflakes in sugar cookies, crisp high five. Great job with the baked. Oh, do you like it? Thank you, Dejugula. I really like all the flavors. I was going to go into a little bit of a deep dive as to like why these flavors exist and like, you know, but I, it's whatever. They're out there. These were, these liquids, you guys, these are available on Recoil RDA, I believe right now. Baked was me and Dwayne and my wife. We spent four days in a pressure cooker just doing nothing but mixing liquid. And I don't mean like, we would mix liquid and then watch TV 
it was nothing but mixing liquid. There was one Saturday morning, <laughs> my wife and I woke up, Dwayne was already up mixing liquids and we just came downstairs and like the first thing I did, dead tired was just vape. I'm like, oh, that cornflake cookie's good. Do you think it needs like, should we put some RY4 in there or something? Like it was, it was a state of mind. We had our minds on nothing but e-liquid for two solid weekends. And it was, we went through, I mean, the banana that came out, that's like banana version five that we went through. Anyway, I'm just glad people are enjoying them. These weren't even intended to be released in the United States, but I'm glad some people got their hands on them before the big uh, before the big vape mail ban. Romeo, been watching since 2016, and I have learned almost everything I know about vaping from you. Uh, you've earned this way more than this. Stay stellar. Romeo, fucking thank you, bro. That's spectacular. I'm sorry that you had to learn everything you know about vaping from me because... As time will attest to, I'm not really super good at this, but I appreciate that, Romeo. I'm glad we could get you off those stinkies, man. Matthew, whoa, that's very gracious of you. Have you thought about building a base for yourself using a fret wire kit? No, but yes, now. So uh, my wife, I can't, I can't sing my wife's praises enough. She's my favorite person on earth. Her and her dad built a guitar out of wood and I've been playing it and playing this guitar built out of wood. I mean, obviously a guitar is built out of wood, right? I mean, what are you going to make a guitar out of? Concrete? Glass? Nice try. And it's awesome. And so I'm thinking, oh, I could build a guitar. I could probably build a guitar. But I think between Casey and I, we could build a guitar. I would like to build a guitar. Uh, Red Gorilla, do it. Me and the kids just picked up the guitar again because music. Fuck yeah, because music. Fuck yeah, because music. Dude, I've been writing riffs. I've been trying to learn. Like, so I was a bass player and I'm trying to transition to like actual six string guitar and it's a whole other world, man. And uh, I decided, okay, I'm just going to tune to straight E and I'm going to start learning like some Metallica songs. Like I'm going to learn Enter Sandman or like try to learn some of the Black album, you know, just to learn it and kind of get my chops up. But I love it. Even when you play a guitar and it sounds like shit, it's still fun. You know, it's still fun. Everybody else just has to listen to your shitty guitar playing. <laughs> Everybody else just has to listen to your shitty guitar playing while you're learning, but uh, that's okay. New Wave Dave, Cedar Point or bust? Uh, you bet your ass Cedar Point or bust. I'm planning a trip. <laughs> I'm planning a trip with my patrons. We're all going to go meet in, in Sandusky, Ohio to ride roller coasters at Cedar Point. And that's the plan. Uh, Queen Honey Bunny. Oh, love what you're doing. Thanks for encouraging me today. QHB. Hey, QHB, Queen Honey Bunny. If I can encourage you, then, then, then my job is done. I'm glad I could help and encourage you, even inadvertently so. La Simo, what's the difference between a garbanzo and a chickpea? You wouldn't pay to have a garbanzo on your face. Oh, chickpeas. Oh, that's... Super gross. Um, haven't you ever heard that joke, uh, Lassimo? I feel like this is right up your alley. I don't want to say it. It's too dirty of a joke. I don't want to say a dirty joke. Should I say a dirty joke? What's the difference between jam and jelly, Lassimo? What's the difference between jam and jelly, Lassimo? The difference is, Lassimo, I don't jelly my dick down your throat. Okay, I'm sorry. That was that was gross. That was over the line. <laughs> That was over the line, Lussimo. I can't believe, why would you say that? I can't believe, I can't, did you hear that? Lussimo, dirty jokes. Yeah, Cedar Point, Sandusky, Ohio, yo yo patron meetup. Uh, sometime when quarantine's over, we're gonna ride some fucking roller coasters together. So that, I think, my friends, does actually represent the end of the vlog. Congratulations, Everybody that was here tonight, you have witnessed the longest vlog in Grim Green history. Yeah, it happened. I can't believe it finally happened. Um, let me just have a little sip of beer here. Well, now that we're just record setting, we're just straight up record setting. We're, this is a record. I think 701 is the latest I've ever gone, isn't it? I used to try not to cut into that's what she said, but now that it's like, hey, let's just keep going. You're four hours from Cedar Point, Ruff McGruff? All right.
Well, you got to join the Patreon to get on the roller coasters. I think that's how. I think that's how. I think that's how it works. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Not hundred percent sure. But we're all going to Sandusky, Ohio, at some point, and uh, we're gonna ride some roller coasters because I'm a roller coaster guy, and we're gonna ride some roller coasters. Hands up, roller coasters, baby. Thank you guys. I, I mean, seriously, so much for coming out for the vlog. I, I love this day. I love Thursdays. I love coming together with you guys, and just hanging out and being a community and like just loving on each other. You know, we're here to love on each other. We're here to lift each other up. And I, and I love that. And you guys, God damn it. I love vlog days. You guys help me just as much as, as you enjoy watching this vlog. I enjoy doing it and I wouldn't, I don't know. I don't want to get all emotional you guys, but I love you, uh, m probably more than you realize. And, uh, Let's keep this community strong. You know, let's keep this community strong. Let's keep saving smokers lives. Let's keep defending vaping and let's continue being as active and as educated as we possibly can. Okay. God damn it. That sounds like a good deal. Vaping is going to win. Vaping is going to change the world, you guys. And we're a part of that. You guys are a part of that. You're going to change the world. You didn't know it. You're going to heaven and you're going to change the world just from watching a Grim Green vlog. Who the hell knew? Anyway, um, I, I'll just wrap this up. I appreciate you guys again uh, more than I think you'll ever realize. Um, no matter what, uh, remember that no matter what anybody tells you, vaping is at least, maybe more, but at least 95% less harmful than taking a cigarette lighting it on fucking fire and inhaling the smoke from that burning organic matter. It does not take a rocket surgeon to figure out that vaping is going to be less harmful than combustion. Combustion is always the enemy. Hi, welcome to the internal combustion engine that has been polluting our planet for at least what, 50 years. I don't know how old your car is, maybe longer than that. 50 years? It would be like, Tesla releasing an electric car and the government going, nope, that produces the same emissions as an internal combustion engine. And it's going to be regulated exactly like an internal combustion engine. That's insane to me. And it should be insane to everybody. So thank you guys from the bottom of my goddamn heart. I love all of you into the ground. Remember, no matter what anybody tells you, vaping is at least 95% less harmful so yeah, let's keep on vaping, you guys. Be excellent to each other. Until next time, peace and chicken grease.